Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So in today's pick a card, we are going to be exploring the potential future timelines that are available to you from where you are right now. So the way I want to go about this reading is rather than just saying this is what's going to happen in your future, I want to take a look at the energy of where you currently are and what courses of action you could take from here and what would happen, like what would the outcome be with each action that you can take? Yes, so we're gonna start the reading by looking at your current energy and then we're also gonna take a look at the energy of the future you if you keep going on your current path and then we'll see what other options are available to you, how you could change onto those paths if you would prefer to do that, and like I said, what the outcome would be, and then we're gonna finish off with some advice from your future self. So there are four readings for you guys to choose from today. I'm gonna show you each of the crystals one by one, and then please pick whichever one you feel drawn to the most. Option number one is fluorite. Option number two is kunzite. Option number three is red jasper. And option number four is black obsidian. Okay, so as always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi number ones, so if you guys chose the fluorite, this is going to be a reading all about the potential futures that are available to you right now. So I just wanted to start by doing a breakdown of how this reading is going to go. Um, I do want this one to be pretty thorough, so there will be a few different parts to it, but we're going to start by rolling the astro dice to see if there's any particular topic or particular area of your life that your future self would like to bring to your attention today. And then we're going to do sort of an energy check. You guys might be familiar with like my love readings where we do a person A, person B energy check, but today I wanted to do it as like person A is present you and person B is future you. So we see where you are now and where you would end up in the future if you continue on the path that you are currently on. Um, and then we're going to ask your future self um, what they would like from you or what kind of future they would like you to move towards. And then we're going to see what your options are. So um, what course of action you can take from now and what the outcome would be of that course of action. Then we're just going to get some final advice from your future self and also pull some cards to see if there are any um, significant time frames that you guys should know about. So that's the scoop. Let's get into it. We're going to start by rolling your astro dice. All right, so you guys have the third house, you have the sign of Pisces, and you have Mercury. First of all, these could be your placements as a confirmation that this is your group. So you guys could have Mercury in Pisces or Mercury in the third house, or you could have Pisces in the third house. You could be a Capricorn ascendant. Um, but this is mainly to show us what your future self wants to talk to you about today. So it's interesting that we have Mercury and third house energy because these two energies go together. The third house is associated with the sign of Gemini and the planet Mercury is also associated with Gemini. So this will have to do with your immediate surroundings. So where you go in your day-to-day -day life, the people you talk to in your day-to-day -day life, I'm kind of getting the vibe from this. It's like the type of energy you guys surround yourself with, the types of ideas and opinions you take in, and also the way that you talk to yourself. I think your higher self or your future self wants you to be very conscious of what you allow to pass through the filter of your mind. The Piscean energy here is making me think of the subconscious mind. It does have that association. And also Piscean people, I have a lot of Piscean placements, so if you if you guys have too, I think you will know, but we can be a little bit um, naive, a little bit impressionable. We can kind of get swayed by the energies around us and we're very sensitive to the energies around us. So, you know, 
if you guys are surrounded by people who are talking, talking, talking negatively all day or who are pessimistic, who have limiting beliefs, who have beliefs that are not in alignment with you. Um, whereas someone else might be able to just be like, oh, that's bullshit. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to engage with that. I feel like you guys could be more um, impressioned by what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're taking in and your future self is saying you just need to be really careful about that and I think you guys also need to discern like what thoughts are mine and what thoughts aren't, what beliefs are mine and what aren't, like what is really coming from me and what am I just absorbing from the people and the energies around me. So you guys might be highly empathic with this Piscean energy as well. Um, you guys might even be able to read other people's thoughts, honestly, with this energy here, but you might confuse them for your own thoughts. So your future self is be saying, be really, really careful about who is surrounding you. Because I think it's just a little bit harder for you guys to block out energies around you. And whether they're saying things out loud or whether you're just in close proximity to them, you could be absorbing uh, some of their negativity, some of their limiting beliefs, or just desires that are not truly in alignment with your own, worldviews that are not truly in alignment with your own. Um, be careful who you're communicating with as well. Be careful of the content that you're taking in and everything like that. So let's get into the cards now. So we're going to do our energy check between your current self and your future self. So Ooh, for your current self, we have the magician coming through and we have the oyster. This is, wow, <laughs> this is very powerful energy. For your future self, we have the emperor and we have zebra. All right, so um, we also have some Aries energy here with the emperor, so that could be significant for you guys. Um, I actually think when this video is up, it's going to be Aries season. So there could be a significant change happening in the course of your future um, during this next month. We also have uh, fire energy here with the zebra, water energy here with the oyster. The seasons of spring and summer might be significant for you guys as well, which, well, actually this is a timeless reading. You could be watching this at, at any time, but if you happen to be on this video when it was just posted and you're in the Northern hemisphere, then spring and summer would be coming up next. But let's take a look at the energies here. So you guys are coming through as the magician. Oh, also the magician is associated with Mercury. So that matches as well. I think once you guys are aware of your empathic gift, once you guys are aware of your sensitivity, which is funny because roses make me think of sensitivity. Once you guys are aware of this energy and you learn how to master it, you're going to become so powerful. Like the energy that we just spoke about, you guys being very receptive, very impressionable by the energies around you. Imagine if you surrounded yourself with people who are extremely positive, with people who are extremely supportive, people who believe that anything is possible, people who take good care of themselves. If you start consuming content like this and deliberately putting yourself in those environments, you will take on all of that energy and become unstoppable. I think a lot of the time, and maybe this is just me, I'm not an empath, so I don't know, but I, I hear a lot of like grievances, I think is the word, from empaths because taking on the energy around you and, and feeling it like your own can be very, very um, tiring, I think. And I think a lot of the time we see it in a negative light or not that being an empath is negative, but that it can lead to some negative um, experiences and negative emotions. And I think your future self is encouraging you to kind of explore the possibility of this being a very positive thing if you know how to work it, if you know how to use it to your advantage, if you put yourself in positive, uplifting, encouraging, confident environments, you're going to suck all of that up like a sponge as well. And I, maybe some of you guys have already done this, like you've already made this realization and made a shift in your immediate environment in the people you talk to every day, um, in the media that you take in, because the magician is your current energy and the magician definitely knows literally how to work his magic, how to work things in his favor. He's like, 
a manipulator of his environment and of his experience in a good way. Um, so you guys have actually put yourself in a position where you're ready to manifest some amazing positive things for yourself. And I love that we have the oyster here as well, because I'm thinking of that expression, like the world is your oyster and oysters make me think of perfection as well. Cause like there is a little pearl within that shell that is getting bigger and bigger and that is getting smoother and smoother and more valuable. You guys have really been working on your inner world and really, really perfecting yourself. And I think a lot of you guys have been working on your spiritual journey and working on your manifestations. And I think your future self is really, really happy about this and is telling you right now, the world is your oyster. And also with the magician, you have everything that it takes to create your desired future. Maybe this is why we're getting like the next month for you guys might be significant because the magician means that you're ready. Like you're ready to manifest what you want. You're ready to receive your blessings. You're ready to move on to bigger and better things. I feel such an empowering and exciting kind of energy from this. And then with the emperor, this is also amazing. This is where you will get to in the future if you stay on this path. Um, the emperor looks very, very triumphant. And this card, which I love, so whatever endeavors you guys are pursuing right now, your higher self is saying that you will be successful. The emperor, I think, is someone who is very, very confident and very sure of themselves. Almost like, you know, he's standing at the top of this mountain and he knows that he's earned that spot. He knows that he deserves to be there. Like, yep, this is my mountain. This is my throne. This is where I deserve to be. This is what I fought for. So I think that you guys are feeling very secure at this time. The emperor also makes me think of independence. So if any of you guys have been thinking to start an independent venture, to live on your own, to work on your own, to support yourself, um, to live your life, you know, regardless of external pressures or external influences and just do you, um, your future self is really happy about that and saying that it is going to bring you triumph it is going to bring you victory and happiness um if you guys this will just be for some of you i think but the emperor can also be like a provider or the head of a household or the protector of a family so if you guys do have a family then this can be showing that you're doing an amazing job at providing for them and supporting them or you could be starting a family um i guess more generally the emperor can talk about being the leader of a group so you guys might be moving up to a manager position or an employer position or expanding on that if you already have it but you're high up here like you're the man <laughs> you're the man you're the boss and you're feeling really really good about yourself i do often feel called to point out in this deck that the emperor is missing an eye so yes he's in this victorious position but he's been through some crap to get there you know he's gone through some losses he's gone he's gone through life you know <laughs> that's the way life is and i think especially with the zebra here you guys have cultivated this inner peace and this wisdom of just accepting the way life is for the good and the bad, for the light and the shadow. You understand that life is both. It's not a journey of I'm moving away from the shadow and towards the light and then I'm staying there. It's like I'm going through both all the time. <laughs> there's always light and there's always shadow. They always exist together and you cannot really isolate one from the other that's the yin and yang of life so i think you guys here have come to understand the duality of life um and yeah the zebra makes me think of that because the zebra is simultaneously white with black stripes and black with white stripes and i think this zebra who this rainbow third eye is making me think that they're very wise they've stopped trying to identify themselves it's like am i white with black stripes or am i black with white stripes and having a crisis about it and they're just like i'm both <laughs> i cannot be defined i cannot be put in a box i'm everything i'm a being of the light and i'm also a being of the shadow like i am literally everything there is and stop putting pressure on themselves to be a certain way it's almost like with the emperor here, I don't need to define who I am or I don't need to prove who I am because I just speak for myself. <laughs> my, my presence speaks for itself. My energy speaks for itself. And 
I'm confident in who I am regardless. Um, I also think that at this point, you've achieved like a wisdom and an acceptance of there's always going to be ups and downs in my life. Um, but the ups and downs will get better as I go. You know, my ups and downs are going from here to here. So I still have struggles. I still stress, but it's about different things. And it's, you know, you're more evolved, you're more mature and more at peace, which is, is really, really nice to see. Um, I think, is that everything that I wanted to talk about with the emperor and the zebra? I think so. So um, we're going to take a look at the next oracle cards and see what kind of future your future self wants for you or what they would like you to do right now. So we have fear. anxiety let me see if there's a nicer way to so that you can see everything Ooh, look creative magician <laughs> so you guys are really really magical your talents are not limited your creativity is your superpower express individuality and then we have travel interesting so Oh, and it's it's interesting that we had the third house and then we have travel here, which is related to the ninth house. And those are like opposite opposites of each other, opposite ends of the spectrum, where third house energy talks more about your immediate surroundings, like the area surrounding your home, your neighborhood, your daily commutes, your smaller world. This energy to me is talking about a bigger world. So I think your future self would like you to step out of your comfort zone. For some of you guys, your, your future self might be literally asking you to move, but especially if you're planning to move to another country or another city, I think that would be amazing to put yourself in a different environment. Um, I think your future self really wants you to get out of your bubble and see that there's like, there's all kinds of different people out there um, and to broaden your perspective a little bit more. Um, yeah, expand your horizons. So it's interesting that we have fear and anxiety here. This is obviously not saying that your future self wants you to be anxious or wants you to be afraid, but maybe is challenging you to do some things that make you scared or that make you anxious. The image on the fear card here, I think it's very interesting that it's black. It's the this idea of something is obscured, something is in the shadow, something is not being seen, and this mysterious doorway beckoning you forward. It, it's really giving like fear of the unknown. So your future self is definitely encouraging you guys to take a bit of a leap of faith and to step into an unknown environment. If I if I translate this a little bit more broadly, this could just be like um, trying to engage in different groups of people or different communities or like changing up the places that you go every day. I think your future self just wants you to break free from the same old, same old every day. Like I see the same three people, I go to the same grocery store, I do the same thing after work and it's asking you to switch that up a little bit. And then in some even further cases to actually move yourself um, somewhere else. Of course, if that resonates with you. Um, and this anxiety card is really giving me eight of swords type of energy in the context of this reading. Um, and it's actually a similar image on the eight of swords where someone is tied up and they, you know, they can't move. But it's kind of this idea that this is a prison of your making or this is a prison of your mind's making. So some of you guys might feel very scared to come out of your comfort zone and, and scared to be faced with things that you're not familiar with. And I think that maybe with this creative magician card, it's like you guys might have it in your head, whether it's conscious or subconscious, that like there's one type of environment that I thrive in or there's one type of person that likes me and that can get along with me. It's like... Or there's, there's one type of career that I'm going to be successful in. There's one type of thing that I'm good at. And I think that you guys are limiting yourself. This creative magician card is saying your talents are not limited. I think there's a lot of facets to you that you guys haven't discovered yet. That you're very talented. That you're very 
Also, you guys are very charming and very likable. And there's something about you that appeals to the masses, that appeals to a lot of people. But I feel like you guys don't really see yourselves this way. You might see yourself as, and I'm sorry, this is just for lack of a better word, but it's like an acquired taste or like that that only a certain kind of people could vibe with you or enjoy what the vibe that you put out. Um, but your future self is saying that this is not the case, that your your soul is actually wanting to expand and wanting to experience a bigger world and experience more but i think that the talents in you and the facets of you that are wanting to show themselves cannot really come out in your current environment or around your current people so there's a need to move there's a need to expand there's there's a need to go somewhere different whether that's a different community a different workplace a different country or all of the above like we got to go somewhere else. <laughs> That's what your future self is saying. So this is what your future self would want for you or what they're encouraging you to do. Um, but let's get into the tarot now and see what your options are. What potential futures are available to you right now? And now I think I actually have to, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> no, sorry. I just dropped like half the deck on the floor. So what I'm going to do in this part of the reading is I, I think I'm going to pull three cards and we'll look at the most like significant paths that you guys could take from here and what future that would bring you. So we'll see your action and then the resulting outcome. And then <laughs> the goal is that you, you could assess and kind of decide for yourself which path you want to choose keeping in mind of course what your future self has expressed to you in the first part of the reading okay so for group number one can we please see what potential future timelines are available to them from where they are right now. So first we have the Two of Cups. We have Saturn. And that's but we'll take both of them. Ooh, we have the six of wands and the nine of pentacles. That's very nice. Okay, now I'm going to switch up the deck and we'll see what would the outcome be of each of these paths. If group one takes the two of cups path, their outcome will be the high priestess. If group one takes the Saturn path, their outcome will be the fool. And if they take the Six of Wands and Nine of Pentacles path, their outcome will be the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna go through these like in this order as I usually do. I'm gonna start with the Saturn and the Fool. I think that many of you guys are currently in a situation that is kind of stifling like the systems in place are too rigid, it's too structured. I feel a lot of like discipline and a lot of like rigid direction, but not necessarily 
in a good way. Like I think some level of structure and some level of discipline is good, but I think that you guys are just too much of a creative and too much of a free spirit like to follow the structure or to follow the routine that somebody else has imposed on you. I think that also you guys are like critical thinkers and so you're not the type to just like if someone tells you to do something you're like okay i'll do it you're like no why is that a rule why do i have to do that so you might struggle with authority you might struggle with like very like structures that don't bend you might struggle with black and whites as well and i think you guys have had this kind of almost like a crisis energy rather than acknowledging that this type of environment doesn't suit you and looking for another environment you think something must be wrong with me because i cannot fit into this system something must be wrong with me because i can't follow directions or because i can't find happiness in this very very structured and disciplined routine like everybody else does like you've kind of put you've kind of put the blame on yourself and i think this is where you absorbing other people's energy comes in because you have all of these thoughts in your head like i need i need to follow this structure i need to stay in this box i need to complete these tasks i need to value this and that i need to want this and that but your soul doesn't and when you feel that disconnect it makes you think that something is wrong with you i think the reason your future self is asking you to change your environment is so that you can come back to yourself and you can feel this weight lifted like oh there was nothing wrong with me ever i was just in the wrong place i was just with people that didn't get me and i was doing myself a disservice by forcing myself to assimilate to the environment instead of finding an environment that nurtured me and that supported me and that validated me like i should be the the freaking deciding factor in my life i should be my own deciding factor my own authenticity my own well-being not fitting to someone else's expectation i think this might be a like a big significant lesson for you guys right now but as much as your future self is calling you to a new environment you know you could very well stay in the rigid structures stay in the rigid routine stay being disciplined and strictly guided where you are now so you guys might be like in a household where there's some kind of really strict people or in a school or in a, a work environment or even in a friend circle like you could just have friends that are really judgmental and kind of close-minded or rigid in some ways and and you could very well stay in these environments and stay around these people but mm. <laughs> interesting so i feel like right now you guys are in this place where this mysterious doorway or this new journey is beckoning you but you're kind of afraid of the unknown but your higher self is showing here that if you stay in your current environment like the stress of being in an environment that is not in alignment with you is going to pile up more and more and more and more to the point where the fear of the unknown is actually a lesser evil <laughs> like i would rather dive into an unknown and have it be bad than stay here for any longer like the pressure is going to build like that and i think it's going to reach a tipping point because we do have the fool here this and you know in a lot of decks we see that the fool doesn't realize that he's about to jump off a cliff like he's frolicking and not paying attention and going right over a cliff this dude is literally thrusting himself off the cliff on purpose he's like fuck this and just <laughs> disappears so i think eventually you guys would reach this point where you're like fuck it i'm taking a leap of faith i can't do this anymore um black horses or dark horses also make me think of the unknown also make me think of mystery so you're like sure i'll take it i'll take the unknown environment it's kind of like an anywhere but here energy and i really like that the unicorn's horn is is sparkling you guys might know that um unicorns make me think of like embracing your uniqueness embracing your weirdness so 
you're like, nah, I don't fit in here. <laughs> I got to find somewhere else to go. And also the horn of the unicorn makes me think of your connection to the divine as if it's your antenna to communicate with your higher self or to communicate with spirit. And you see as the horse is jumping or as the unicorn is jumping, the horn is leading the way. <laughs> so something deep in your intuition will just pull you. So it's less of a matter of if you will take this leap, but more so when. And your higher self is letting you know, like, yeah, if you could stay in this current situation, but you're just kind of delaying the inevitable, like you're going to have to break free at some point. Now, your other options here is that you could take this leap alone or you could take this leap with somebody else. Um, so maybe this is like you could be moving and then someone's moving with you or leaving a work environment and someone is leaving with you or you're starting a new journey you're starting a new activity and someone is starting it with you you know someone doing it with you always makes it less scary i think so if you guys are feeling really really scared to walk through this tunnel you could find someone who you know because the two of cups is about mirroring so someone who feels similarly to you someone who feels the same grievances who feels the same stresses and is ready to hurl themselves off this cliff as well um and they can be like your buddy as you walk through as you walk through this doorway together um it, it will be less scary and i actually i feel very positive about this about finding a partner and for some of you this person is already in your life or for others of you i feel like they'll be coming coming into your life really really soon um but you're kind of going to be at the same stage in life where you're like i'm i'm sick of my responsibilities i'm sick of these people telling me what to do i'm sick of working so hard to fit into a standard that i don't even care about like I'm just sick of expending my energy on all of these things that I don't care about and I want to do something that is authentic to me. So you're like, okay, let's do this. Like you have this talent, I have this talent. Let's start a business together or let's each start our own businesses but we'll support each other and we'll be buddies and like keep each other on track. You know, it's kind of buddy system <laughs> like this to, to make you feel less alone, to make you feel like it's more possible. And I do think this is a very specific person that this reading is talking about because the two of cups and the high priest is together. First of all, it's double twos. And it is giving me like soul mate or soul family kind of energy or like a kindred spirit kind of energy. And probably you guys were brought into each other's lives for this very reason so that you don't feel as alone so that you feel like you have a support system um so that you feel validated in your dissatisfaction like i'm not crazy right <laughs> like this environment is stifling right it's not just me and you really feel like you can move forward to something better i am getting more of a, a friendship vibe from this if i'm being honest although it could definitely be a romantic connection if that does um if that does resonate with you but something will just feel right something will just click like we've got each other we can do this let's freaking go let's let's freaking make the jump um you could also go about this alone with the six of wands and the six of pen or sorry six of wands and the nine of pentacles nine of pentacles is it is an independent person. It's someone who, oh, and the six of wands is a leader as well. This represents like self-employment, starting your own projects, doing your own things. The six of wands represents victory, admiration. So you will be successful here as well. But with the seven of pentacles here, I think it would just take a longer time, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's, it's just to let you know. So Maybe having this partner, having this buddy with you. Well, first of all, if you're working on the same project together, that makes sense because many hands make light work. Um, and I think the motivation and the emotional support that you find in each other is is really, really going to keep you going and not, it's funny that there's Saturn here too, and like not come crawling back to 
Saturn. Like, ah, oh, I tried to make my dreams happen, but it didn't work. So I'm gonna crawl back to this environment because you feel like it's the only place that you can go. I feel like having this partnership keeps you believing that your dream future is possible. So there's a bit less ups and downs. There's a bit less back and forth um, and your fire keeps burning. Whereas this is more of like, a, if you're on your own, you can still do it, but you have to put in a lot more effort to keep yourself motivated. And it might take a bit more time because sometimes you stumble, sometimes you fall, or it's just like a bigger workload that you have to do all by yourself. Simple as that. Um, but both of these paths would lead you to success either way. But I feel like this is the happiest one, like just from my subjective opinion. And I think that you can definitely have this energy regardless, like the energy of victory, the energy of living your best life. Um, but yeah, for some of you guys, I think that this person is already in your life or you'll be meeting them very, very soon, but you'll definitely have a really, really deep intuitive feeling about them. Like, oh yes, we're, we're here to support each other. We're here to work together. We're here to pursue our dreams together. This person was here to wake me up and to get me out of my handcuffs and, and to help me realize that there's more to life and that there's more to me and there's more to what I'm capable of doing. And this bubble that I've been in is not the whole world and not everybody in the whole world thinks this way and has these same standards. And it's on me to find the place where I really, really thrive and stop doing this disservice to myself where I shove myself in a box. So they'll really awaken you to this and I think you'll help awaken them to this as well. Like, I, I keep hearing like buddy system, like you came into this earth through some kind of buddy system where like, if things get too spooky down there, you come find me. <laughs> Like, come save me and we'll get out of this shithole together. It's like, it's, sorry, Earth, I'm not saying you're a shithole, but like, life can, can certainly feel like that sometimes. So yeah, it's your buddy system. Okay, so let's take a look now at the advice from your future self. Ooh, oh my gosh. Own your divine power. Replace codependent people pleasing with assertiveness and empowerment. <laughs> Miss, Mr. Emperor over here. We also have rhodochrosite. Be gentle with yourself. You've been through a lot and need time to heal and recover. Yeah. Wow. These are really straightforward. I don't even feel like... Um giving them additional interpretations but your future self is saying it's time to own your power it's time to stop people pleasing and it's time to give yourself the benefit of the doubt and give yourself a break and then focus on service your soul desires only to joyfully serve and to swim in a constant stream of bliss this stream continuously feeds you everything you need put your entire focus upon staying in this stream of giving and receiving in every situation and in all that you do i think on this journey you guys will be repairing your relationship with service and your relationship with responsibility because it's not that you guys can't be a servant to others or that you can't fulfill responsibilities it's just that you gotta care like you gotta care about what it is that you're doing so whereas up until now i think that you serving others and and completing tasks and fulfilling responsibilities has felt like such a drag and has felt like such such a chore when you're following your passion and you're doing something that you really care about, that service becomes a joy. No, that service becomes an honor. To be able to give of your energy and make a positive difference for others, that becomes like the utmost joy and the utmost honor. All right, so to finish off the reading, we're going to pull a couple cards to see if there are any significant time frames that you guys should know about so ah <laughs> let me see what we got here Ooh, so we have pluto and we have descendant so mm, some of you guys could be a scorpio descendant as well which would be a taurus rising but pluto could be referring to oh 
Oh, okay. This is like Libra and Scorpio season because Pluto is related to the sign of Scorpio and Descendant is related to the seventh house, which is related to um, Libra. So what we're seeing here is the time frame between late September to late November. So of course, this is a timeless reading, but if that's coming up for you guys, then that could be an important time frame. Um, and then we also have Chiron. I do not think this is talking about a time frame, but <laughs> Chiron talks about the wounded healer. I think there's so many. Oh, and then we have Pluto, which is about like transformation, descendant, which is about relationships, which is about others. You guys, you guys are healing and transforming the lives of others. This is what it's talking about. I was just going to say, there are so many black sheeps out there. There are so many people who struggle with the systems in place and with the structures in place just like you. And for you to have the courage to step out of it and heal yourself and live a life that is authentic to you, I think that gives you the power to heal others and that gives you the power to inspire others to do the same. And I think you're going to end up being an amazing example for all of the people out there who are, are different, for all of the people out there who are black sheeps. It's the very things that have you feeling wounded right now and that have you feeling hurt right now, which will ultimately become your greatest strengths and which will ultimately become the greatest gift that you could offer to someone else because you could help someone else on their journey of transformation. You could help someone else to walk through this door or to, to jump off this cliff. Your experience and your bravery will serve so many. Ooh, so group one, these are all the messages I have for you. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you're interested in listening to that one or any of my other songs, my music channel will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love to both your current and future self, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number twos. So if you guys chose the Kunzai, this is going to be a reading all about the potential futures that are available to you right now. So I just wanted to start with a breakdown of how this reading will go. We will start by rolling the astro dice to see if there's any particular topic or area of life that your future self would like to bring to your attention today. And then we are gonna move on to an energy check. So if you guys have ever watched my love readings before, for example, you might be familiar with that person A, person B, energy check but in this reading I want to think of person A as the current you and person B as the future you so we're going to see where you're currently at and where you're headed in the future if you stay on your current path then we are going to see what your future self would like from you, what they would like you to do, how they would like you to move towards your future and then we're going to see what your potential courses of action are. So what paths can you take from where you are right now? And what would the outcome be of each of those paths? And then we're going to finish off with some more advice from your future self and also see if there are any specific time frames that you guys should know about. So there's definitely a lot to get into, but I did want this reading to be quite thorough and just hopefully give you guys some more insight on what your options are from here on out. So let's let's get started by rolling the Astro Dice. All right, so for your number, we have the number six, we have the sign of Libra, and we have the planet Uranus. So first of all, these could be your sign. So you guys could be 
um, a Libra or an Aquarius or have um, a lot of that energy in your chart. Um, we also have some Virgo energy with the sixth house or maybe you guys have like Libra in the sixth house or Venus in the sixth house or maybe you have Aquarius in the sixth house or Uranus in the sixth house. Um, but of course, this is mainly to show us what your future self would like you to talk about today. And with Uranus here, I do think your future self is saying there is some big changes that need to be made. And actually the way it was coming to me is like, there's radical changes that need to be made so that you can move into a happy future. With the number six here, this will likely have to do with your daily routine and your habits. It could have to do with work as well, as I think the sixth house can relate to the workplace. And with the Libra energy here, it's very much about how you deal with others. So like there's some big changes that need to be made to your relationships and how you serve people and how you respond to people in order for you to be happy. So maybe there is a little bit of people pleasing going on. Maybe we need to learn how to say no. We need to learn how to be more assertive or we need to learn how to take care of ourselves first before we take care of others. But it seems like maybe that's going to be the underlying theme in, ah, I just like accidentally rolled it over and then it went to Aquarius. So Libra and Aquarius energy seems to be pretty um, strong here. If those are not your signs, it could be the signs of somebody significant that you're dealing with. Um, but if not, that's totally fine. It's just extra confirmation for those who may need it. Um, but yeah, I think throughout this reading, we might be seeing your future self encouraging you to stand up for yourself, take care of yourself and put yourself first. So let's get to the energy check now. So we're gonna look at the energy of your current self versus the energy of your future self if you keep doing everything as you are now. So for, uh, <laughs> it's Libra, it's more Libra energy. For your current self, we have justice as well as the cosmic egg. And for the energy of your future self, if things keep going the way they are, we have the devil as well as the crocodile. So we have a bit of Capricorn energy here as well. And then we also have some water energy here. So that's um, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. And then with the cosmic egg, I believe that this one is associated with the crown chakra. Um, but let's start over here on the side of your current self. I, well, actually I am surprised that justice is here because that's a cool synchronicity, but I'm also not surprised. Like we're seeing energy that is consistent with what we saw in the Astro Dice. I think that you guys are incredibly considerate people and you're incredibly responsible people and you're always concerned with doing the right thing you're very very thoughtful of others and how your actions are going to affect them and i think that before you make any decision big or small your higher self is saying big or small you would consider like the implications how is how are my decisions or actions going to impact this person and this person and this person um, how is it going to impact their life or how is it going to impact how they view me? You really want to weigh the pros and cons of your decisions and take all things into consideration and you just want to do what's best for everybody and I think that is a very admirable trait but just taking into consideration the energy that is here I think your future self may be warning you about this a little bit because like we mentioned before you may be erring on the side of people pleasing and sort of forgetting your own desires and your own best interests in favor of like never ruffling any feathers, never getting into any sort of confrontation, inconveniencing anyone. Like you could, that sort of stuff could be weighing on you a little bit too much. And it's interesting that we have the devil here because this is showing like the energy of your future self if you if you stay in this current justice energy and the devil is all about being tied down or being oppressed and i think that the more you put so much focus on 
on pleasing others, on meeting others' expectations, on, you know, never never rocking the boat in your relationships. It's like you kind of have to um, kill yourself is not the right expression, but I guess kill your will or kill your desires more and more and more. I think this is sort of risking becoming selfless to a fault, like filling everybody else's cup except for your own. And you could end up really, really bogged down by this energy and really tied up by it. And with the crocodile here, this is making me think of a predator. There may be people around you, or if you stay in this energy, you could be attracting people who would take advantage of this compassion, who would take advantage of this non-confrontational nature. And there's a specific message coming to me, like you guys put so much care for people who wouldn't put the same care for you. So if, if I can just give a hypothetical example, let's say there's someone who's like, oh no, I couldn't possibly call in sick. I couldn't possibly take the day off today because that is going to screw over the company. But that company wouldn't think twice about screwing that person over. You know, it's like putting in so much consideration for a person or organization who would not even think twice. And, and your future self is saying it's not fair. And this is a beautiful trait that you guys have, but I think you need to be selective about whom you give it to because there are people who will there are people who will take advantage of that. With this cosmic egg here, I think this is about protecting your energy. You guys are beautiful divine being like you are something to behold and anyone would be so so lucky to have you in their life your energy first of all your aura is gorgeous i feel like people are just naturally drawn to you um, for your inner and outer beauty for the kindness that you emanate i also think there's something kind of otherworldly or ethereal about you with this crown chakra energy because this energy center is like the bridge between our physical self and the cosmos, our physical self and the divine. You just exude this beautiful divine energy, which attracts wonderful people like you, but it also attracts snakes. It also attracts leeches. So your future self is really, really asking you to protect your energy. And this is not about like, like disowning your compassion or disowning your consideration or disowning your diplomatic, peaceful energy. It's just about yeah, being selective about who you give that to and never prioritizing that. Well, maybe not never, that's a strong word, but <laughs> being careful not to prioritize that over your own best interests and over what you truly want. So your future self is really coming through to ask you to start prioritizing yourself more. Let's take a look at the further oracle cards and see what your future self would like from you at this time. We have growth. This reminds me of the flower in Super Mario Bros that like lets you, it let, doesn't it let you like shoot fire <laughs> if you get the flower? Like you get the mushroom and then you get the flower. It's been a long time since I played it. Um, we have endurance. Creative why? No judgment, but would this still matter to you if no one else consumed it? Please say yes. Interesting. And then we have well-being. Hmm. So this card is really standing out to me the most, this why. Going back to this kind of acute consciousness of others' opinions, risk of becoming a people pleaser kind of energy it's very interesting that we have you know this question being posed to you this is about creative projects when it says would this still matter to you if no one else consumed it but i think we can apply this to the greater picture in your life um if you take everybody else out of the picture and examine your life examine your daily routine examine your habits examine what you put energy into would you still be happy with your life would, or would you still be doing what you're doing if other people's opinions didn't matter? Or does a significant portion of your current fulfillment come from the idea of, 
I'm not making anybody angry or people are approving of me. I'm not getting in anyone's hair. I'm not bothering anyone. I'm, I'm keeping the peace. People are okay with what I'm doing. People like what I'm doing. You know, I think it's a little bit, I think disingenuous is the word <laughs> to say that that's not a factor at all in our being peaceful and being content. But I think that maybe your higher self is warning that it's become too much of a factor for you or that it will become too much of a factor for you if things keep going the way they are now. And this is a really sweet card as well. Like your future self just wants you to be happy. Your future self just wants you to be at peace. And I can, I can almost see like your future self would come back to you and say, you're stressing yourself out so much about people who don't matter. I think it's specifically like people or the opinions of people who don't matter and it's not worth it and it's not fair to yourself and I just want you to be at ease. I just want you to be okay. Your future self wants to come back and just tell you everything's going to be okay and that you should live freely and that you should do what you want and you should live a life that you're happy with even if everybody was out of the picture, like everybody's opinion was out of the picture. This card here the word endurance, I definitely think this is like a nod to you and how much that you've endured and how much you've sub, what's the word, subdued yourself, suppressed yourself. But the image here also makes me think of support. Like people are working together to hold up this city. And I think that your future self wants you to realize that the people who really care about you and the people who are meant to stay in your life will actually support you being more assertive, will actually support you speaking up and support you putting yourself first. That will make them happy. Like your no will actually make them happy because they're like, yes, good for you. You're, you're taking in more energy that you do want and rejecting energy that you don't want. And I want that for you because I love you and I want you to be happy. The people who are threatening you to always say yes are not people who really care about you. So why should you care about someone who doesn't care about you? That's not fair. That doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem important. So I think establishing better boundaries will help you to realize who truly cares and who truly supports you. And maybe endurance is talking about who will stick around who will pass the test, <laughs> who will pass the test of your boundaries. The people who stick around, the people who endure that, who not only endure your no, but support it, those are the ones you want to keep around because those are the people who truly support you. And I think there's potential for a lot of emotional growth here. And I also think this flower is representing you guys um, blossoming. We have a lot of greeny, energy here which is making me think of healing green also makes me think of the heart emotions so i think that your heart is really blossoming here because this is not about hardening up and saying like okay i'm not going to be compassionate anymore i'm not going to consider others anymore but planting your flower somewhere where it's going to be nurtured and where it's going to be supportive and giving your compassion to the right people all right so Let's get into your tarot now. So we're going to see what potential futures are available to you guys and what the outcome would be of each action that you can take from here. And hopefully this will bring you some clarity and help you to decide which path you want to take. So for group number two, can we please see what futures are available to them? So first we have the five of cups. It's interesting, we have more snake imagery. We have the six of pentacles. And the two of swords and then I'm just gonna switch up the deck
And then we're gonna pull some cards to see what the outcome would be of each of these courses of action. So if you take the Five of Cups path, your outcome is the Three of Cups. If you take the Six of Pentacles path, your outcome is the Knight of Cups. Huh. And if you take if you take the Two of Swords. your outcome is the six of wands. All right, so, mm -hmm. honestly, your future self really has your back because <laughs> all of these outcomes are positive and I don't know, I just, I'm really impressed by the energies that have come out here because it's like, you could handle this situation in a few different ways, but you're gonna end up happy no matter what. Like, I think your future self, I think your future self is gonna make sure of it. Um, I obviously know that there's more than three options that we have at any given moment of what we can do. So my intention with these was to pull cards for like the most likely courses of action that you would take, which tells me that you guys staying in this energy and ending up tied up like this devil is very very unlikely because what your higher self and what your spiritual team are gonna start doing oh this is really sweet what they're gonna start doing is putting beautiful loving people in your path they're either gonna remind you of the beautiful connections that are already in your life or they're going to bring new people in your life who really treasure you and who really treat you right and they're gonna remind you what a healthy connection feels like and they're going to remind you how you deserve to be treated and i feel like once you get a taste of that it's you know it's really really hard to stay in this energy because once you receive that love and you receive that support you're like remind me why i, I waste my time worrying about opinions of this person who does nothing for me <laughs> like this person who is not nice to me this person who doesn't show that they care about me like why am i putting them on a pedestal so much why like it just doesn't make sense anymore once you feel true love that just doesn't make sense anymore um and this is what really like sealed the deal for me that you guys are okay no matter what because the two of swords when it comes to a course of action this would talk about basically pretending that there's no problem so <laughs> you feel like you feel uncomfortable, you feel energy kind of pulling you two ways. Should I stay in this situation or should I go? I don't know, it's too difficult to decide, so I'm just not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna pretend that everything is fine and, and you know, keep living my life. But even if you do that, someone's gonna come in for you. <laughs> With this Six of Wands, I'm thinking of this as like, uh, someone, oh, okay. I'm thinking of this as like someone coming in to save you. Like, someone's going to find you no matter what. Someone who's going to love you and treat you right is going to find you and help to pull you out of this negative cycle. This is a part, like, this is literally a part of your journey. This is part of the lesson that you were meant to learn. Maybe a lot of you guys are already, like, cognizant of this energy and you're already well on your way out of it. And oh my gosh! I don't know why I didn't think of this until now, but this is all about like attracting good love in your life and attracting healthy relationships into your life and like, uh, what is it called? Helping you to bring the right people in so that you don't repeat the same mistakes from past relationships. Like Kunzai is a stone that is really, really good for that. So I don't know if you guys knew that choosing it, but it makes a lot of sense to me that you guys chose this. And it's also pink, which is another color of the heart. Um, so I think you guys are already um, like energetically in a place where you can be manifesting these loving connections and where this energy that we're seeing here is going to fly out the door. And actually, maybe this whole reading was meant to be a confirmation for you guys because you've already 
recognize your people pleasing tendencies. You've already recognized like your overly caring, overly concerned with um, with confronting, with ruffling feathers, tendencies. You've already acknowledged this and you're worried moving into the future that you're going to repeat these patterns in your future relationships. And I think your future self is coming forward to say like, no, you're good. You've done the work. You've, you've recognized what needs to change. And you're in alignment with these beautiful connections now. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Yeah, this is totally like a reassurance reading. <laughs> it's all coming together now. This is this is totally here for your reassurance to confirm that everything is okay. Yeah, someone's coming into your life and I think that the the 6 of wands and the knight of cups are the same person. Like someone's coming in on their horse <laughs> to come and get you and to come and show you love. I am getting a romantic kind of vibe actually for this group um but of course it, it could very well be a friendship it depends like what resonates with you but um there's really really strong indication of of someone coming into your life um so basically what i'm being shown here is that your options from now are to cut this energy out of your life so to remove the connections remove the jaw, remove the environments out of your life that have been weighing on you, that have been stressing you out. You can remove yourself from that situation or you can continue to give your energy to it and continue to feel responsible to it. Or you can stay in this limbo where you're not doing anything and pretending there's no problem. These are like the main possibilities that I'm being shown. It's very interesting that on this card, we see someone who is releasing snakes because we spoke about maybe there are some snakes around you. We spoke about that with this crocodile as well. Ah, okay. You see how there's fish here on this devil card? These fish make me think of a creative spirit, of a free spirit. And we spoke about you guys being very divinely gifted. We spoke about you guys having this beautiful ethereal quality. And I think some people, and I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but like some people get off on you not, not exploring your potential and using your energy to serve them instead. Like it makes them feel powerful and it makes them feel like they're successful in keeping you down and and I can give the example of like someone who works for a company again maybe this person is an incredibly talented artist and it's part of their calling to um, make beautiful art or to create this beautiful invention or create this beautiful business in the world and their boss is just like a grumpy Scrooge <laughs> and can still see the talent and the ethereal beauty in this person, but it makes them feel kind of powerful that they could prevent their employee from seeing their true worth and keep them under their thumb. And it makes them feel more secure. This could also be something that's happening in a friendship, which is sad, but it does happen. You know, like friends seeing how amazing their friend is and being a little bit envious. And there's there's nothing wrong with being envious, but it's when you choose to act on it and, and let it control you and make you a bitter person. That's when it becomes a problem. And unfortunately, it, it does become a problem a lot of the time. And I think there are some friends who don't want to see their friends succeed and, and like to keep them under their control and like to keep them, you know, this, this friend might be always like talking about their problems and coming up with ways to get their friend's attention. So their friend has to spend all their time comforting them and listening to them and giving them advice and ignoring their own path, ignoring their own potential. And that makes the friend feel weirdly powerful. I, there are ah it makes me so sad to say but like there are people like that out there and so you guys have been dealing with something like this I think and so one of the courses of actions for you guys is to let go of these snakes and the outcome here is the three of cups and I think that you're going to realize that these snakes were weren't shit anyway um the three of cups is one of those cards that it can be a very nice energy or it can be kind of a, a 
icky energy depending on the context because it is a very lighthearted energy but taking things lightly is not always a good thing right like if someone's taking your true desires lightly or taking your potential taking your true path lightly and saying like nah i'll just keep you around to satisfy me i'll just keep you around to serve me three of cups can also talk about people who are gossiping or people who are talking shit so again you might have these snakes in your life where it's like you've done so much for them and then they have the audacity to be like going around and talking about you or like they wouldn't lift a finger for you in return so i think once you let go of these people you're gonna realize that and it might be sad at first you know because the five of cups is sad but i think it's really gonna feel like a weight lifted at the end of the day and I think you'll know that you made the right decision. The other option is to continue giving to these people or organizations, to continue serving them, to continue feeling responsible to them. Six of Pentacles is a very generous energy, responsible, and it has this feeling of like serving and giving to others. So you could continue giving to these people or organizations, but your Knight of Cups is going to come anyway. Someone who truly loves you, someone who truly values you, is going to come anyway. And the Six of Pentacles is also about reciprocity. And I, I feel like a lot of you guys are aware that this is something you truly want. So you will naturally go towards this Knight of Cups who is reciprocating. I don't know if it was just a matter of you guys needing to know that this Knight of Cups was out there for you, that you could attract this Knight of Cups, that you were worthy of this Knight of Cups. But like I said earlier, I think once you feel this true love, this true, um, friendship, this true appreciation. There's just like no comparison and you can't justify staying in this energy anymore. So you will naturally go towards this Knight of Cups. But then <laughs> the other option was you guys, which I don't think a lot of you guys are in this energy, but acting like there's no problem. I'm not a people pleaser. That person is not mean to me. They're just they're just going through a lot or, uh, you know, they have, they have their problems and I have to be compassionate and just pretend that you're not being walked all over. You could do that. And maybe some of you guys have done this in the past, but your night would still come, <laughs> except with a bit more of an aggressive energy because your higher selves are like, okay, <laughs> we're going into plan B now. You got to come in here and be like, excuse me, miss, what the fuck are you doing? And <laughs> they will come and save you anyway. So you're in very, very good hands. Like I said, I don't think a lot of you guys are staying blind to this. Maybe you have before, but I do think it's dawning on you. Like I, I can't keep doing this anymore or I'm going to become tied down like this devil. So I, I really, really feel for you guys that everything is going to be just fine. Um, but let's take a look at your further advice from your future self. Ooh, let yourself sparkle and shine. You are guided to be bold and show your bigger than life side to the world. Mm -hmm. There are certain forces that have been trying to keep you small because they couldn't bear that you would shine brighter than them. They couldn't bear that you would be bigger than them. And your future self is saying, allow yourself to shine. There are people who need to see your light. And there are people who want to see your light and who will support you. But you're not doing yourself any favors if you hide that light. We also have Sapphire, easy does it. Your health, happiness, and abundance require a gentle approach to life and work. Now, I'm not going to say that life is easy because sometimes it's just not. <laughs> but... There's a message of like, you guys might not realize how easy life can be for you or how much easier your life can be because at this point you've been piling on so many unnecessary stresses. Like dealing with your own thoughts and emotions is enough work. Like and then you have to deal with these person's thoughts and these person's emotions and these person's reactions and be hyper vigilant about how they're taking everything you do and how it's affecting you. It's like, it's just so much unnecessary stress and unnecessary obligation that you've put on yourself and this easy does it card your future self is just asking you to to chill and really fall into how easy and effortless life can be when you are supported by people who care about you 
Then we have notice the signs. Yes, the signs you've been receiving are heaven sent. We drop feathers, coins, and other signs upon your path to remind you that you're loved and never alone. Mm -hmm. So these um, night, this Knight of Cups or these Knight of Cups have definitely been sending you signs that they are coming to you, that this beautiful love is coming to you. Um, you could have also been receiving signs to like get out, <laughs> get out of your current situation, cut ties or cut it out with this overly selfless and people-pleasing energy. Your future self has been trying to communicate with you. The higher selves of your loved ones have been trying to communicate with you. So this is a message of confirmation. Like, yes, that was us. Please take heed <laughs> of what we're saying. All right, so to finish off this reading, we're gonna see if there are any significant time frames that you guys should know about. So first we have Mars. So airy season could be uh, significant for you guys. And actually when this video is up, I think it's going to be airy season. This could also be Scorpio season. So this is a timeless reading. It will of course depend when you stumble upon this video and which is coming up next. But if airy season is coming up next or if it's right now, <laughs> this could be a significant time. If Scorpio season is coming up next or if it's right now, this could be an important time. Uh, let's get one more. Oh, okay, two more. So we will look at them together. We have cardinal and masculine. Okay, so the cardinal masculine signs are Aries and Libra. So that actually matches here. Aries season, Libra season, and Scorpio season are coming up for you guys. So these are all the messages I'm seeing for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you guys are interested in listening to that one or any of my other songs, the music channel will be linked down below too. Sending you guys lots of love to both your current self and your future self, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number threes. So if you guys chose the red jasper, this is going to be a reading all about what potential futures are available to you right now. So I just wanted to do a breakdown of how this reading will go. We will start by rolling the astro dice to see if there are any um, particular areas of life that your future self would like to bring to your attention today. And then we'll move into the energy check. So we're gonna do this between your current self and your future self and see where your future self will be if you remain on your current path. We're also going to ask your future self if there is anything they want or need from you or any advice that they want to give you. And then we're going to move into looking at your potential future. So we'll see what courses of action you can take from where you currently are and what outcome each of those courses of action will bring so that hopefully you can decide um, which path is best for you and then we'll just finish off the reading with some additional advice from your future self and then see if there are any um, specific time frames that you guys should know about so there's definitely a few different parts to this reading but i wanted this to be pretty thorough um, and hopefully this will bring you clarity about what your options are moving forward so let's get started with your astro dice and see what your future self wants to talk to you about today. All right, so we have the number three here. We have the sign of Virgo and we have the planet Uranus. So it's interesting that we have, well, the third house is related to Gemini, but it does have mercurial energy if that's the right word and Virgo is also ruled by the planet of Mercury so maybe Mercury has a heavy influence in your chart um, you could be a Gemini or a Virgo or maybe you have like a Gemini Mercury or Virgo Mercury 
We also have a little bit of Aquarius energy here with Uranus. Maybe some of you guys have Uranus in the third house or Mercury in the third house, or you have the sign of Virgo in the third house, so you could be a Cancer rising. Um, but these are just for confirmation. You definitely don't have to be these placements. And this part of the reading is more to see, like I said, what area of your life we're really going to be um, focusing on today. So it kind of, the way it's kind of coming through is your future self is encouraging you to get your stuff together. I feel like you guys have been thirsting for some kind of change in your life for a long time. I feel like you guys might be kind of tired of your everyday life or your everyday experiences or your everyday environment. And you've been kind of wanting things to be drastically different. Uranus makes me think, of like complete or drastic change or wanting adventure in your life, wanting some kind of sp spontaneity in your life. Um, but Virgo is very like analytical and very organized. So it's like your future self is affirming to you that this kind of big change in your life is possible. Um, and that fresh, exciting, inspiring energy can come to you. But we need some kind of plan of action. Like, yes, I want my life to change, but how am I going to change to make my life different? Or what is my plan of action to get out of here? There's just a feeling with this group of like, maybe your current situation is a little bit dull for you or a little bit uninspiring. Like, honestly, it, it kind of seems like you're bored if I, if I say it plain and simply. And you need a new challenge. You need a new excitement in your life. Um, you need more intellectual stimulation and you need to be able to express yourself. Uranus sometimes gives me genius energy. And for this group, it is giving me like a creative genius energy. And I wonder if maybe your current lifestyle or the current environment you're in is not really allowing you to express yourself freely and so it's like you have this kind of pent up creative energy or pent up expressive energy and I think you've been feeling for quite some time like you just want things to be shaken up in your life but we need to we need to plan what actions we're going to take to bring that about because I feel like your future self is saying this is not really something that's just going to be um, handed to you. Oops, I just, <laughs> I just accidentally flipped the die and it went to the number 10. So this could be relating to your career, related to your position. Some of you guys are wanting to move up and do more challenging things in your career. Or you might be drawn to a career that is kind of um, unconventional. Or that would in some ways put you in the public eye or make you very well known. And your future self is saying like, yep, this feature is available to you, but we gotta like... We got to get going. We got to think about how we're going to do this. All right. So let's move into your energy check part. So we're going to take a look at the energy of your current self and the energy of your future self or what your future self would look like if you stay exactly on your current path. So for your current self, we have the fool which is actually related to the planet uh, Uranus. So we have some repeating energy here. And then we also have the elk. For your future self, we have the hanged man. So there's um, Pisces energy and the bat. Um, oh, <laughs> it's kind of cool. So in, it's a different spirit animal deck. It's the one by Colette Baron Reed, but there's a, a bat card in that one too. And it, the bat is hanging upside down in that card. And so it's cool that you have the hanged man and the bat and like bats are animals that do this, you know, they like hang upside down in their cave. <laughs> so that kind of matches well. Um, we also have the elements of air and earth here. So air or earth signs could be significant or the seasons of autumn and winter could be significant for you guys, like when some change is coming for you. But I also think that this air and earth energy is talking about putting your ideas into reality, making your ideas tangible, because air is all about thoughts and ideas and earth is all about, you know, the stuff that you can touch, the stuff that is physically in front of you. So your higher self is really emphasizing this transition of like, make your dreams a reality, make your 
ideas a reality. Um, I think that you guys have felt felt like something bigger is coming to you, like some breakthrough is coming to you for quite some time. I think you guys feel drawn to a certain calling. Like we spoke about before, you might be really called to a certain career or called to a certain way of expressing yourself. And you might sort of have this deep feeling of like, you are destined for something. You're meant to do this in the world. You're meant to make this kind of impact. You're meant to create this. You're meant to express yourself in this way. Like you, you feel this sense of fate. You feel this sense of a greater purpose. With the elk here, I do think you have a close connection to your higher self and I do think that you have an awareness of what your higher self is capable of and what your higher self wants in this lifetime. Just with the antlers here and them being the same color as this heavenly body up in the sky, um, anything like antlers or horns, antennas, it makes me think of like you're picking up signals from the divine. And the way the elk is looking up to the sky, it's like you guys are channeling insights from some higher realm, from some heavenly being. The Fool is also a card that talks about being close to spirit or being close to your higher self. Um, some of you guys might resonate with um, star seeds or light workers or healers or have just felt like you have a very important purpose in this life and felt a little bit special, felt a little bit different. And I actually do think in many ways, like, yeah, like you guys have genius energy, creative genius energy. And I do think you are meant to do something that's pretty unconventional and pretty special and pretty impressive. Um, with the butterfly here, I think you felt like you are due for a transformation, like for yourself to transform and for your life to transform. And it's interesting, you know, given what we saw with the astro dice, I do think it's interesting that we have the hanged man and the bat here. Your future self seems to be kind of warning you that if you continue in your current energy, you could still be like waiting around for something to happen. I think that you guys are accurate in feeling your destiny and feeling your calling and feeling like there's a big energy out there that is waiting for you and that there's amazing experiences that are out there waiting for you. But your future self is saying that this is not going to come find you and you will need to go and find it. So your future self is asking you to make a practical plan of what concrete steps you will take to find this future and is kind of like lighting a fire under you and trying to nudge you to take action. For a few of you, your future self might be asking you to stop procrastinating or asking you to be a little bit more disciplined with your schedule or with your routine, you know, like get up and do it, put in the work. I feel that kind of push from them. Um, I will say, so with this fool energy here, the fool can talk about someone who is like an amateur or a beginner or someone who is lacking in experience. Um, I feel like it's again, it's like you guys have a good idea, but haven't necessarily like put in the steps to make a plan. So if I can just give an example, like maybe somebody feels like it is their dream. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking of like a K-pop idol for some reason, like it's someone's dream to be a, a K-pop idol and their future self is saying like, well, have like, have you learned Korean? Have you been looking for auditions? Have you been saving money to go to Korea? Have you been working on your dancing skills? Like, have you been working on your like charm and your charisma? Have you been making connections? Um, and, and I think your future self is kind of suggesting that maybe you haven't been doing enough to make this a reality. And just like, no, but I, I feel like I'm meant for this. I feel like this is my calling. And, and kind of 
passively waiting for something to happen for you or waiting for something to come to you or maybe you say like I'm gonna get started on my dream once this happens once once I finish this once I've cleared out this cycle once I have more time once I have more this or that and and sort of putting off what you know you need to do and your future self is kind of warning you that you could still be hanging here waiting for your destiny to find you if action is not taken. Um, I feel for you guys because it's really scary to pursue something that you care about so much. It really is like a leap of faith and you really have to give it your all and be prepared for whatever happens. And I think that pursuing your dreams is not for the faint of heart. And with the bat here, I think that this is more than just like not being motivated or not knowing what to do. I think it's a little bit deeper than that. And I think this inaction is kind of rooted in fear. The full moon here makes me think of intense emotions and it makes me think of something that wants to be exposed and something that wants to be seen. But the bat is flying away from this full moon. So almost like the bat is escaping their deeper feelings. And also bats are blind. <laughs> so it's like an inability to see or a refusal to see the emotions that are really holding you back. And I think that this might be like a fear of failure or a, a fear of judgment or something like that that is getting in the way or being too much of a perfectionist, you know, being uncomfortable with this amateur place that you're in so much so that it's it's getting in the way of you even trying I often see with the fool like we gotta just be comfortable with not being in our element for some time or with not being amazing at what we want to be amazing at for some time because the only way we can develop these skills is by literally doing it and just because something is your calling it doesn't mean that you're going to be immediately really really good at it or immediately really really successful at it because maybe your calling in this lifetime is supposed to help you learn dedication and help you learn resilience and help you learn perseverance and practicality um i could also think of this as like someone who wants to start a channel and they're like you know, I feel like I'm meant to reach a lot of people. I feel like I'm meant to share my message. And yes, that is right. That is accurate. Your future self wants to affirm that to you. But then feeling like, oh, I just, I don't have enough time to start my channel or I'll start when I get a better camera. I'll start when this or that happens. And I feel like this goalpost for when you're going to take your dream seriously is always just like moving away. Because, you know, something else will always get in the way. And I think your higher self is saying, are you sure you're not just a little bit scared? Like, it's okay if you are. We're, we're all, I think a lot of us are scared shitless in the face of something that really matters. And in, in the face of something that we really love. Because there's a lot on the line there. And it's nothing, it's nothing to be ashamed of. But I think you guys just need to admit that to yourself and I think there might be some healing that needs to be done with the full moon here these emotions want to make themselves known to you and if if you don't address them they're going to keep um controlling your life behind the scenes and keep you in this hanged men energy where you're still waiting for your big break where you're still waiting for your opportunity to come you're still waiting for your destiny to roll around um yeah yeah your, your future self came in with, I think, with a little bit of tough love today. But let's take a look at the, uh, the rest of the oracle cards to see what your future self wants or needs from you at this time. So we have anxiety. It gets better. Creative action. You have to start in order to finish. You can't flow without movement and transformation. So exactly what we were talking about with the butterfly. Um, with this anxiety card here, I do think that your future self is asking you to face the things that make you afraid and to figure out the main cause of your anxiety. I think that you guys are just putting a lot of pressure on yourselves to do things perfectly because 
like you've hyped something up so much to be your calling and to be your destiny that that if you made mistakes or if you didn't do it perfectly it could really hurt your pride or it could really hurt your feelings like what am i even trying for if i if i can't do this right and like it, this is supposed to be my destiny i remember like when when i was younger i was like in love with with the japanese language and so i had it in my head like i meant to live in japan this is what i meant to do and maybe that was true but because i put it up on such a pedestal when i was learning the language anytime i made a mistake or i couldn't understand what i was reading or i couldn't understand what someone was saying it would like crush me and i know that sounds kind of dramatic and it was but like I would cry because I can't understand what somebody is saying and and it hurt my pride because I built myself up to be like yeah I have this destiny that I'm supposed to move towards and then when I can't do it it's it's like it's almost like it hurt my identity so maybe there's a need for you guys to identify a little bit less with your dreams or a little bit less with what you want to do um leo energy is coming through like to not have so much pride or to not take things so personally and i'm not saying that what you're moving towards is not your destiny or that your soul doesn't want to go in that direction but i think i'm saying to have a more detached and a more healthy outlook when it comes to it and to treat it like this is something i gotta learn just like any other skill this is something i gotta work towards just like any other project and i gotta learn how to fall in love with that process and your future self is saying that it gets easier um i think starting is the hardest part when it comes to anything like this like getting yourself started is the hardest part but then once you start you get into it you get into the zone you get less anxious as you go along even with like i can relate a lot to this group even with like making music it used to be so freaking difficult to get myself to do it again because i, I had in my head that i was like destined to be a musician so it hurt a lot more when I made something that I didn't like and it was so stressful and so overwhelming to be tinkering around with a bunch of different sounds and like 90% of them sound like crap. That process of like trying out a bunch of stuff that sounds crappy until I find the perfect sound, I couldn't enjoy it because there was too much pressure on finding the perfect sound so that I could affirm to myself like, see, you are meant for this, you are special or whatever, you know? <laughs> um, is too much perfectionism and too much pressure and it made too much anxiety. Um, but as I started to like chill out about it more and just enjoy the process and and not put that stress on myself that I need to make something amazing and beautiful and perfect because it's it's okay to just be average and it's okay to mess up sometimes. It makes the process a lot easier. Being comfortable with the beginner mentality and learning as you go and being comfortable with feedback is gonna help a lot but yes i feel like i've addressed this you have to start in order to finish you can't flow without movement so you will get into the flow once you start moving once you start going but i feel like your future self is this butterfly <laughs> that's gonna come and like poop, <laughs> push you off the cliff and really really wants you to take this leap of faith and then we have transformation and which is cool because i was talking about the bat and the other spirit animal deck and i think it says a rebirth is assured so your transformation is assured and your success is assured because you are meant to do this but i think that you guys might have in your head that being meant for something means that it's going to be super effortless or means that like you're automatically going to be amazing at it and i get it because we see like I don't know, I can speak for my own experience, but you know, we see 
In music, for example, we'll see like, this person started writing their own songs when they were just 10 years old, and here they are singing on Broadway when they were six, and they like sound better than most adults, and you know, they're already so successful. And I think when we see stuff like that, we can internalize like, well, if I'm meant to do this, then I should have been writing songs when I was 10, and already had a perfect voice when I came out of the womb. Like, we can kind of internalize standards like that and your high, your future self and yes your higher self i've been kind of using those interchangeably today but your future self wants you to know that it's it's okay to be at the level you're at now and it's okay to try different things out and and try and fail and make mistakes and change your mind and in some ways it's not a contest of course but that has its own special like admirability and respectability and impressiveness like that you really put in the work and you really like swallowed your pride and put your nose to the grindstone if that's the expression and through trials and errors you cultivated the <clears throat> the confidence that you have now and the talent that you have now and the knowledge and the wisdom that you have now your journey is different but it's equally as important and it's equally as impressive. I think you just put like too high standards on yourself or model what your journey should have looked like after someone else who was successful. But you create your own success based on your choices and based on the actions that you take or don't take. And what you want wants you. What you want is your destiny, but your future self is asking you to go and get your destiny, to claim it, and to do what it takes to claim it. Okay, so we are going to move into the tarot part of this reading now. So we're going to see what courses of action you can take from where you are right now, and what the outcome would be of each of those. I'm just noticing we have like, these are kind of similar yellow color so working on your solar plexus might be very helpful for you guys also your root chakra red stones make me think of like being a leader being confident being expressive being an initiator I'm also feeling called to, I heard like you guys should listen to divine masculine meditations, like to honor and strengthen the divine masculine within you. Okay. Oh, also there's a message coming up with the elk. You know how they like, I think they grow their antlers every year and then they fall off. Like they grow up and they get big and strong and then they fall off. I feel like you guys maybe have been very close, like very close to committing to your dreams many times. It's like you build up the courage, you, you invest a little bit, you mentally prepare yourself. Maybe you even go so far as putting in a little bit of effort and then you fall off the wagon again. I feel like there's been sporadic, like, I almost did it kind of events throughout your timeline. Like, you just need that last bit of courage to, to go off the edge. And to really, really put all of your heart and soul into it. Okay, so for group number three... What are the potential actions that they can take from here? We have the Two of Cups, the Hermit, oh, so there's more Virgo energy, the Two of Cups is Cancer energy, I believe. Um, which I think I mentioned Cancer Rising earlier. 
Oh, that's so interesting. If you guys are a Cancer rising, then there's a good chance that you're in Aries midheaven. And like midheaven is about your career and who you are in the world. And Aries is like initiator, action taker, bold, go-getter kind of energy. So for some of you guys, that is your destiny to like show off your Aries energy to the world or be like an Aries and thrust yourself into your career goals. Okay, and then we have hmm, the Two of Swords. This is so interesting. Group one got the Two of Cups in this exact position and group two got the Two of Swords in this exact position. So we're going to switch up the deck now and see what the outcome would be for each of these. Oh, wow. That's a really interesting parallel as well. The full moon behind you that you're blind to because like the bat is blind and this person is, is covering their eyes. Um, there's some counterpart energy happening here, like some kindred spirit energy happening here, mirroring soul kind of energy. Um, some of you already know who this person is, but I think they're very inspiring to you and they could be a big source of motivation for you, whether that's in person or in spirit. It's funny, I feel so much more, like I have to shuffle the cards a million times. This is, yeah, there's some perfectionist energy going on here. Okay, so if you take the Two of Cups path, what will your outcome be? The Fool. Hmm. But you see the difference? <laughs> This fool is standing at the edge and this fool is very boldly thrusting themselves off the cliff. Okay, if you take the hermit path, what will your, what will your outcome be? The lovers. Huh. <laughs> More counterpart energy. And they look really similar. Like two animals, yin and yang. Snakes and wolves might be, snakes and or wolves might be significant spirit animals for you guys. Um, this is also Gemini energy, which I think we spoke about earlier with the third house. And your outcome for the Two of Swords is the King of Swords. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one over here. I think that this one is representing, it's sort of reflecting that same energy of like, if you stay doing what you're currently doing. And like I mentioned, I think it's really interesting that these two images are very, very similar. There's a full moon. There's really ripe, intense emotions that are ready to be addressed. And then there's a creature who is ignoring them, whether it's because they're blind as a bat or they're physically covering their eyes. They are running away from their emotions and pretending that there is no problem. The Two of Swords, I'm just forever, I'm so fascinated by like the extra layers of meaning that the same tarot cards can get just like in a different deck with a different illustration. Um, the Two of Swords talks about indecision not knowing what action to take. And in this deck, I definitely think the reason for that indecision is because the person is not considering the factor of their emotions. If they were only honest with themselves about how they truly felt, they would not have this indecision. So in the case of this person, they're indecisive about whether or not they should take the leap of faith and go after their dreams. 
but they're not really indecisive. Deep down, they know, I want so badly to pursue my dreams, but I'm, I'm terrified of failure. I'm terrified of judgment. I'm terrified of being wrong about my destiny and, you know, building up my hopes and, and, and feeling proud of my destiny and then everything falling flat. I'm so scared of that, but I'm not ready to address that fear. And so I stuff it down and my mind convinces me that I'm just, I'm just indecisive. I just don't know if I want to go for it or not. I have to think about it more. I have to, I have to analyze more. I have to wait for the right time. So the two of swords is a lack of action due to indecision, due to pretending that there's no problem. And you could go on living this way. And I, I do think that you're going to find success for sure, no matter what you do, because you're very, very smart and you're very, very competent. And, you know, the outcome here is the king of swords. So you're definitely going to end up in a high position. Probably you're going to end up making good money and being well respected. Um, but you will have to like detach from your heart, basically, in order to feel content, because I feel like your soul would continue calling you towards this dream. So I'm just going to use the, the K-pop idol example again. Maybe this is like you, you just remain in that on the fence energy. I don't really know what I want to do. And that keeps you frozen. That keeps you in a state of inaction, in a state of passivity. And you just keep going on your regular path of getting a, I don't know, for the sake of this example, getting an office job. And then you move up to the regional manager and then you move up to the big boss and like, yeah, you're very successful. You have a wonderful pay. You have a very cushy life. People think very highly of you. Like everything's good on the surface, but deep down, there's still that voice that's calling you. Like, I wonder what would have happened if I had, if I had learned Korean and gone to Korea and gone to that audition. And if I'd put more effort into my rapping skills and my dancing skills, whatever it might be. Like all of those what ifs I think would stay with you. And even if you don't address this full moon, it's still gonna be like peering at you from in the shadows. Um, I'm thinking of that DW meme that's like, that sign won't stop me because I can't read. <laughs> like ignoring, ignoring the sign that is so, you know, staring you right in the face. Uh, also, this this one might be a little bit more obscure, but there was this website, rathergood.com, back in the day, back in the 2000s, and it just had, like, uh, like flash videos with, like, songs and weird cartoons and stuff, and there was this one called The Frightened Boy, and The Frightened Boy just stood there still for the whole time with a frightened expression on his face. And throughout the video, more and more like outrageous things appear behind him <laughs> and are like dancing and singing. And he just doesn't look, doesn't turn around because he's too scared. So like some giant crabs show up and Britney Spears shows up <laughs> and they're like having a techno party and dancing. And still the boy doesn't turn around and he does not dare to look at them because he's too freaking scared. So that's what this big, huge full moon behind you is making me think. Your fears are like, hey, are you going to stare us down? Are you going to address us so that you can finally live the life of your dreams? And this person's like, what are you talking about? I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not scared. I'm just, I'm just indecisive. I'm just trying to find the most practical solution for me. There are some feelings that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is the outcome if you just choose to keep covering your eyes to the fear that is behind you. Um, hmm. So let's get into these cards because this is what was making me think we have some kind of um, counterpart energy going on. We have the yin and yang snakes that are intertwining. We have the yin and yang wolves that are mirroring each other. We have the two of cups, which is... Um, which is definitely counterpart energy. Um, but I think that the Two of Cups also has an interpretation where this is not so much about a specific person, but, oh, I also noticed they have uh, yin and yang here. This is not 
necessarily talking about like your counterpart that I'm picking up on in this reading, but talking about someone with whom you could partner up to make this easier. Um, and with the yin and yang energy that we also have here, this could be someone who has a similar dream or a similar vision to you, but has a different skill set so that when you come together, you're each um, you're each putting in effort and you're encouraging each other as you go along. It makes you more motivated to have someone working alongside you and to feel like responsible to somebody. It keeps you going. It's like when you when you're trying to get fit and you have a workout buddy, you know, and you feel that like, oh, I can't. I can't bail on my friend, I gotta show up to the gym again today. Whereas if you're by yourself, it could be a little bit more difficult. You know, having that partner to encourage you, I think could really, really help you guys. So your future self is saying there's someone you might be able to partner up with to work on this um, project, to work on this dream, to work on this business, whatever it is, they can be like your business partner or your creative collaborator and working together with this person is going to make it easier um like in terms of time and resources and ideas they're going to make it easier but also in terms of emotional support and um and motivation and then we have the fool as the outcome which is now instead of being this little kitty standing on the edge you're like a strong robust horse <laughs> or unicorn actually who is jumping very, very confidently off the cliff. So having someone with you and having someone who's gonna work hard with you and who's gonna support you could definitely make you guys um, feel more courageous to take this leap of faith. Cuff cups are also about um, emotions and I wish, I wish I could remember what planet is, so I think it's Saturn? If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll put a subtitle, but I think it's Saturn and Cancer that the Two of Cups is associated with. But anyway, I think this is someone who could help like keep you disciplined, who could help keep you accountable, who maybe, maybe could gently help you turn around and address this full moon and work through your fears so that you feel more confident. Um, you might have, you know, this full moon might be huge. This healing that needs to be done might be huge, but you don't have to do it by yourself. Your future self wants you to know that like loud and clear. You do not have to do this yourself. Um, there will be some friend, some partner, some collaborator whom you can lean on. So maybe that's like a big saving grace, I think is the word for you guys, that you don't have to go about this alone and that you can have a buddy to go with you on this journey. Um, now, okay, this is kind of interesting. So <laughs> this is where the major like counterpart energy lies. And I feel like I, I feel like I don't talk about this so much in readings, at least anymore, but maybe some of you guys who chose this group do resonate with like being on a twin flame journey. Cause I'm just, I'm just really picking up that vibe. Or it's just like a mirroring soul, a familiar soul who's really, really close to you and you have similar visions. What I will say is that you, you do also have the choice to go about this on your own. So to go about your healing journey on your own, to work through your fears alone, to put in all the effort alone. Um, you know, this might be more difficult to motivate yourself all the time. It might take a little bit longer to be successful. But what I will say is that this way assures that you're staying really, really true to your vision. So, you know, you might be very happy with this partner. You might find a good success and confidence with this partner, but your future self is warning that you would have to compromise on your vision a little bit or compromise on your, like on your ideas a bit. So in the case that like, let's say you're making music or you, you have a lot of ideas for songs and this person is like, oh, I'm a, I'm a producer, I can mix music, I can distribute it for you. So it's like, great, this is gonna help to be more productive and help me to stay motivated. And, you know, I'm gonna benefit, they're gonna benefit from this too, because, you know, maybe 
they had ideas for songs, but they, they suck at writing lyrics or they can't sing. So like we can work together and it's this mutually beneficial partnership. And then both of our dreams come true. And also we like each other. So this is great. It's really great, but you might have to compromise a little bit on the vision that you had because you know someone else's input is coming in and that's that's not necessarily a bad thing but like if you guys really really feel passionate about your unique expression and really really letting your genius come through and what makes you unique really really come through then you might want to consider doing this on your own if it's a matter of like i'm willing I'm okay with this taking more time and effort on my part if it means that I can do it in a way that is 100% authentic to me and I can really show the world like what I'm made of and what's in my inner world and what's my style and my taste. Like if that's super important, then maybe you might consider doing it on your own or maybe you can do these in a certain succession. I'm not sure, but... There's also this feeling of like, maybe this is only for some of you, but there's this feeling of like you have a counterpart, a twin, whatever label, like someone's out there, your mirrored soul is out there. And the more you are true to your vision and to your expression, the more you would come into alignment your expression is very, very similar. So like, I don't know, let's say this partner makes like pop music, but your taste is more like, more edgy, more dark kind of vibe. Then your counterpart is also more that vibe. So if you assume this vibe more, it'll be more easy to align or to end up in the same arena to end up in the same space and I also think because the lovers also tells me about like telepathy and channeling each other if you really dive into your own vibe you can channel this connection more you know almost like when you create their energy is in it their ideas are in it and when they create your energy and your ideas are in it like your stuff is coming through the same creative channel. Um, which, you know, that's neutral, but maybe for some of you guys, it's like important to you or that sounds pleasant to you. You want to align more with this counterpart energy. You want to be more um, like connected like that. And of course, connected to yourself. Um, so that's like another factor to consider. Whereas I feel like this is, kind of your fast track to success and easier to keep you motivated, still very happy and very fulfilling, right? So it's really like how you feel, like how important is it that your vision is totally untainted and totally yours? And, and how important is it that your energy is in alignment with this counterpart, I guess? Um, oh, and then we already spoke about that one because I started with that one. So let's move on now to the advice, more advice from your future self. Ooh, this is not advice. This is just a message for you. Malachite with prosperity. There's a positive shift in your flow of divine support. So basically your future self is just saying you guys are going to be wealthy. And I'm starting to burp now. So that was an important message. Um... You guys are gonna be wealthy no matter what. Like, let's just get that clear. <laughs> it's just a matter of what kind of vibe do you guys wanna be in? What what do you wanna prioritize? What kind of life do you wanna live? How do you wanna express yourself? Um, if I can give my subjective opinion, I might not really recommend this one, <laughs> but you know, both of these seem like very lovely options for you. And I maybe you can do both somehow. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Um, watermelon tourmaline is also huge, like counterpart energy. Um, it's green and pink, which is the masculine aspect of the heart and the feminine aspect of the heart. Stress reduction, de-stress your mind, body, and schedule as you need to rest, recharge, and revive. If you guys are lacking in motivation or in inspiration, you might be burnt out. You might be overworking yourself. 
um, and then it's hard for you to get in the zone. I feel like you do need to you do need to maybe rearrange your schedule and and set aside time like this is my even if it's like 30 minutes an hour whatever you can manage in your schedule but you need to set aside time for just yourself and say like this is my time to brainstorm this is my time to practice this is my time to do research um, and don't put the pressure on yourself of like, I need to produce something or I need to come up with a finished product or I need to come up with a good idea because you don't, but you just need to get into the habit of, of dedicating time to that practicing, to that brainstorming, to that trying things out. And once you start, you'll get in the flow and pretty soon good ideas will start popping up exponentially. And then finally, we have child. You care deeply about children and they readily respond to your love. All children, including your own inner child, require love, affection, and attention. We can clear and open your heart and schedule. Hmm, yeah, clearing out your schedule so that you can give more time and energy to the children who need you. Um, I do think first and foremost, this is talking about your inner child. This dream might come from your childhood or the fears that are holding you back might come from your childhood. Um, your perfectionism, in fact, might come from your childhood or your fear of rejection or your fear of judgment or the pressure that you put on yourself to, to have everything figured out and to already be amazing at everything. Um, yeah, you know, this full moon is really huge, but it might have started as a seed that was planted in your childhood and just grew bigger and bigger and bigger as it was left to fester. But again, you're not alone. You're not alone in healing these wounds, whether it's like your friends and loved ones or collaborators who are actively helping you through it or a counterpart who is energetically helping you through it. Um, you don't have to do it alone. You could if you wanted to, but <laughs> you don't have to. All right, so to finish off this reading, we are going to see if there are any specific time frames that you guys should know about. So we have Jupiter, and I just looked this up the other day of when Jupiter was gonna change signs and I don't remember anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to look it up again, but it it enters, it changes signs twice cause it like, it, it changes signs and then it goes back and then it changes again. Um, but maybe the period when Jupiter is, I think it's gonna go into Aries next. The first time Jupiter dips into Aries, that might be an important time for you guys. Also Sagittarius season might be important this is a timeless reading so you know whatever is like uh coming up for you at the time that you're watching i think jupiter's in aries from like may to december actually yeah i think it's may to december and then yeah sagittarius season is in december that's a very very big window so <laughs> maybe this is just saying like the second half of 2022 is gonna be significant for you guys. Um, and then we have the number 33. So some of you guys might be turning 33 and that's gonna be a significant age for you. Um, this could also be, I don't know if it's 33 days, but I guess it could be like 33 days from now. But we have T-square at the bottom. Squares are, they make me think of three months because if two sun signs are squaring each other, they're, you know, three months apart. So maybe this repeating threes is talking about three months. Um, again, it's a timeless reading. So if Sagittarius season is coming up for you at the time that you're watching this, then that will be significant. If you're watching this in 2022, then, you know, the second half of this year could be significant for you. If you're watching this later, like in 2023 or beyond, then I would take this, uh, let's say one to three months, because <laughs> it could be 33 days, one to three months. So 
Yes, these are all the messages I have for you, group number three, so I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching, and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you're interested in listening to that one or any of my other songs, my music channel will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love to both your current self and your future self, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number fours. So if you guys chose the Black Obsidian, this is going to be a reading all about what potential futures are available to you right now. So I just wanted to start with a breakdown of how this reading will go. We're going to start by rolling the Astro Dice and seeing if there's any particular topic or particular area of your life that your higher self, future self, <laughs> I've been using those interchangeably, but it makes sense, that your future self would like to bring to your attention today. Um, and then we're gonna get into the energy check. So you guys might be familiar with the person A, person B style energy check that we normally do for connections. But today I want to um, look at person A as your current self and person B as who you will be in the future if you stay exactly on your current path. We're also gonna ask your future self what they want or need from you right now or what they would like you to focus on. And then we're gonna move into the potential futures part. So we'll see what courses of action you could potentially take from your current point and what outcome each of those courses of action would bring to you. Then we're going to finish off the reading with even more advice from your future self and see if there are any significant time frames that you guys should know about. So there's a lot of parts to this reading. I wanted it to be pretty thorough and hopefully this will bring you some clarity about what your options are and what you would like to do moving forward. So let's get right into it. We're going to start by rolling the Astro Dice and see what your future self would like to talk to you about today. All right, so we have the sign of Aries here, and then we also have the sign of Pluto and the number eight, which number eight, which would be representative of the eighth house. Pluto and eighth house energy matches up, and then we have um, Aries energy here. This would be Scorpio energy, so those could be your um, zodiac signs or you might have a lot of placements in those signs or be Pluto dominant um, and with Scorpio being associated with the eighth house there's also a Mars association so there's double Mars energy double Pluto energy um, it's a very very powerful energy that's coming through right off the bat I have to say um, Pluto likely means that there is some huge transformation going on in your life um, and with the Aries energy here I think that you guys are becoming more independent and you're becoming more of an action taker. There's this feeling of you guys, like you're not just going to take life as it comes to you anymore. If you don't like something, you're going to change it. If you want something, you're going to go after it. Like you're becoming more of an active participant in your own life. And you're starting to feel really, really empowered in your own life. So gone are, gone are the days where you just like, accept things because oh there's nothing I can do about it or you know just let people or situations take control or take advantage like you're really becoming the main character in your life you're really becoming the boss of your own life um, and then with the eighth house here I think you guys are getting really interested in your inner world really interested in your psyche and really interested in healing yourself I'm getting like major self-improvement and and self-empowerment vibes from this energy which is amazing and I actually think this might be your future self coming back to say thank you <laughs> which weirdly that's like the first time that specific message has come out in this whole video like your future self going out of their way to come here and be like thank you thank you for the hard work that you did thank you for waking up thank you for taking charge in your life thank you for creating this amazing future that i'm living in now so your future self is really happy and really moved by everything you've done for them and even i'm starting to feel kind of moved 
like this is major daddy energy <laughs> very very dominant very boss like energy and i love that for you so let's get into your energy check now so we're going to see the energy of the current you versus the future you that you will become if you stay on your current path so for current you we have the sun and the moth and then for future you we have the hierophant oh my gosh you guys are on fire <laughs> and the wolf wow so um some more zodiac signs that we have here are leo and taurus i also want to mention there's a lot of fixed sign energy going on here because we've mentioned leo taurus and scorpio that is three out of the four fixed signs so i feel like you guys have been very very dedicated to bettering yourself and very very perseverant when it comes to the pursuit of your goals and also very patient with yourself when it comes to your healing so your future self is really thriving because of that and is really grateful because of that so let's take a look at this energy representing the current you we have the sun here um this is a very happy energy it's a very inspired enthusiastic energetic and confidence energy so this is likely the energy that you guys are in now or this is the energy you're going to be in very soon or what you're really working your way towards but i think you guys are are really embodying this energy where you feel very inspired by the world around you and feel like you can do anything you set your mind to i think you guys have some kind of idea that you're considering putting into action or you've put it into action recently um, a business idea a creative idea um, an idea to change something significantly in your life and that's made you very excited and i'm actually getting that some of you it's like you're excited about life for the first time in a long time like actually excited about the future actually enthusiastically planning about the future and really enjoying the journey and the preparation for the first time in a long time so some brilliant ideas are coming to you or they will be coming to you very soon on how to improve your life or what you want to make what you want to create um also for some of you this could be an opportunity that's coming to you from another party like i think some of you guys are getting a job offer or some kind of uh, contract is coming to you, an offer for some kind of partnership or collaboration or internship or fellowship. I don't know what fellowship means, but <laughs> um, you know, like working under someone's wing or partnering with someone or commission, someone's commissioning you. Um, I feel like a lot of you guys are gonna become a magnet for offers because you're radiating this beautiful, warm creative vibrant brilliant energy the universe is really going to start throwing a lot of offers and opportunities your way i think and the moth is giving me that vibe as well because you know like the moth going towards the sun it's making me think of a moth to a flame so a lot of people are attracted to your energy right now you could also be like getting asked out a lot <laughs> in the near future or you already are maybe you're going to notice that people have been complimenting you more like did you did you change something did you change your look you look so good lately and maybe you did change your look but for a lot of you guys i think that you're just emanating a different vibe even if you, like you didn't cut your hair you didn't change your makeup you didn't change your wardrobe you're just radiating confidence and and people think like wow you're looking really good lately um yeah people are very very drawn to you and moths also make me think of transformation uh, metamorphosis which matches with the pluto energy oh and actually you guys have the number five here which is all about change growth developments and 19 which reduces to one which is about new beginnings and being confident and taking initiative this is really really nice energy here like i said you guys are on fire um oh i should mention this is the air element and this is the earth element so oh yeah there was another group that got this like air transitioning to earth and the feeling it gave me was like your ideas are becoming a tangible reality you're creating your physical reality from from your thoughts from your ideas from your desires um it could also be that the autumn and winter seasons are going to be significant like some big offers coming to you then some big change is coming to you then um but 
I think most of you guys are pretty sure that you want to move forward with this. I am getting a pretty strong and confident vibe. Like, yes, I want to start that project. I want to create that thing. I want to explore this idea. I want to accept this offer that's come to me. Um, there might be some of you who are kind of on the fence about it, but, but I do think that the majority of you are confident and happy about it. Just with the Hierophant here, there's a feeling of like someone will teach you. Someone will take you under their wing and teach you because this has teacher and mentor kind of energy. So I just wondered if maybe there were a few of you who were like, I want to go forward with this project, but I feel like I don't have enough knowledge or I don't know where to start. Or I, I want to take this offer, but I worried that I don't have enough experience. Like maybe I'm not the best match for this person or for this company or whatever it is. Maybe just wondering especially if you don't have a lot of formal experience, you know, like maybe you have done a lot of your work just intuitively or made a lot of your creations in the past just intuitively. So to join like a bigger organization, it's like, ah, but I don't know if I have the, the textbook knowledge or the, the technical skills that you guys are looking for. And the Hierophant is saying like, it's okay, we'll teach you. So even if you don't feel 100% ready for the opportunity, I think that you'll definitely go through some kind of training and you'll have a lot of support. So anything that you're lacking in right now, um, the people bringing you these offers would make sure, would make sure that you, you know exactly what you're doing and you know everything you need to know. So I really think that there is nothing to worry about there. Um, for those of you who resonate with this more being an independent thing that you're going for, um, like making or creating or launching something on your own, I actually see that in the longer term future, you could become like a counselor or a teacher or a coach. Actually, maybe some of you guys are thinking of starting like a life coaching business or something like that. Um, but whatever it is that you're doing, it's like one day you will be so knowledgeable. Because yeah, both of these cards, the Hierophant and the Wolf, they both talk about like authority. And the Wolf has this feeling of like being powerful, being a leader, you know, like the leader of the pack. So you're going to gain a lot of authority and a lot of confidence in what you do that someday you would be able to um you would be able to teach others wow so i feel in this group particularly i feel really really strongly your future self saying like keep doing what you're doing and i'm just look i'm just trying to think back to the other because there was mm, it was pretty mixed but i just feel really strongly with this one like your future self is like chef's kiss, amazing. You're doing amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Because we're, we're going to be in a good place. A good place in the future. Um, very specific message. You might actually, maybe this is like for one person. But I just thought you might be dealing with someone whose name is Wolf. Like their last name is Wolf. Um or some variation of that, or like Wolfgang, <laughs> or something like that. Um, yeah, but let's get into the, the rest of the Oracle cards and see what your future self wants or needs from you at this time or what they would like you to focus on. Ah, so the first card we have is Trust, Communication, Creative originality. Why would you just want to offer more of the same? Standing out does not always mean being number one. Often it doesn't. And then we have lighten your load. So what I feel really, really strongly from this trust card is to trust in where your heart is guiding you. The phrase follow your joy is coming through as well. I think you guys have really been working on cultivating joy in your life and your future self is just saying like, keep doing what makes you happy because you're leading us to such a wonderful place. Um, trust that you are on the right path. Don't, um, don't overthink too much or don't question or doubt yourself too much. They're saying it's a lot easier said than done, but remember, your future self is saying this to you as someone who knows more. Like your future self has already been there and has seen what has happened. And they're coming back to you and saying like, oh my gosh, group four, like don't doubt yourself. I promise we're doing an amazing job over here in the future, two, three years into the future, whatever it is. Please don't doubt yourself. You can have so much more confidence. I think one piece of advice 
your future self would give you is to speak up more. Like if you're in a room full of people and you're like, ah, I'm the least experienced person in this room. I'm, I'm the least educated person in this room. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, just speak up anyway, because that's how you learn. And, and if you have an idea, people might receive it really, really well. Or if not, they'll at least give you feedback or they, they can at least answer your questions. And that's how you learn. Um, it was, oh my gosh, I saw this on, you know how Instagram recommends like random reels? And it was Selena Gomez, I think. And, and she was saying, I think it was someone in her family used to always tell her, if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. Like you should always challenge yourself um, to be with people who can, who can teach you something like this hierophant and don't be, don't be ashamed to ask questions or don't be ashamed of not knowing and, and speak up because you never know. You might think that your idea is dumb or that your question is dumb, but it's actually really, really insightful and it's actually really, really brilliant. And I think that's what this communication card is talking about. I think um, the people and the spaces that you're aligning with right now are people with whom you really share a vision that's why I think these eyes are, you know, staring at each other. They're seeing eye to eye. They're meeting each other. Hands make me think of effort and work. So it's like you're meeting each other in your vision. You're meeting each other in your work ethic, in the effort. Could also be you guys like high-fiving each other. <laughs> like, yeah, that was a good idea. So speak up more and be more confident in your ideas. That's something that your future self would probably like to to go back in time and tell you. Um, I just had this specific image of like, you guys having an idea and then thinking, ah, no, that's, that's not a good idea and not doing anything with it. And then later you see someone in your field like um, unveiling a similar idea or profiting off a similar idea. And you're like, damn it, I had that idea a year ago. Um, so you guys actually might be ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. Like if you think your ideas are kind of out there or kind of weird, maybe you're a trendsetter because we do have this originality here. So your ideas being different is definitely not um, a bad thing. This Oracle card, it kind of has two different messages. And I think the point of this card is that we don't go to any one extreme. Um, we don't want to needlessly try to make ourselves fit in, but we also don't want to be like quirky and original just for the sake of standing out. I think authenticity is really the key when it comes to this card. And maybe we have a mixed group here. Like some of you guys are worried, um, worried that your ideas or like your working style is too strange and that you should try to fit in more and make things like everybody else. Or on the flip side, conversely, you guys could be thinking, I have to do something to stand out. I have to do something to be different. And I think that both extremes can become unhealthy. Like you put too much, uh, too much pressure on yourself. So I think your future self would also say to you um, that it's okay to do what comes naturally to you in any moment. The sun makes me think of like that creative source that is beaming out from within you. That is your authenticity. What makes you you? So it might be kind of cheesy advice, but your future self is saying like, just be yourself. Just be yourself. That is the best thing you can do for your colleagues, for your team, for your community, for your loved ones, for the world, really. Um, and I, yeah, I think this light in your load is asking you not to be so hard on yourself. It's like you really have the weight of the world on your shoulders. And I think you guys are getting better at this. You're getting better at being more gentle with yourself. Um, getting better at asking for help, communicating your needs. Um, I just see you guys surrounded by like a group or a team of very, very generous and supportive people at this time who will help you. Um, if you guys are going through an intense transformation with this Pluto and eighth house energy, maybe some of you guys are going through an awakening or you're purging some energies right now. Your future self could also be asking you to clear out your, your schedule a little bit or don't don't feel guilty about canceling plans or not going out as much like sorry can't hang out i gotta purge some energy <laughs> i gotta do some energy clearing like 
make make time for that. Don't be like busy and bata bata and running around and, and doing all kinds of stuff when you have to heal, when you have to purge. Um, also the letter L could be significant, like someone's someone's initial could also be Leo, Libra, um, the name of a country, city, company. Yeah. But this is everything I see for our initial energy check. So let's move into the tarot now. And now we get to see your potential futures. And I'm really, really excited for this group because it feels like the possibilities are endless. What potential futures are available right now to group number four? I'm also hearing like keep your energy sacred, keep your temple sacred, keep your body sacred, be mindful about what comes out of it, like what words you speak, what energy you put out, and also what goes into it, whether that is food, fluids, substances, people. All right, so for group number four, what potential futures are available to them? Three out of four groups today have gotten the two of swords. What the heck? <laughs> hmm, so some of you guys might be getting multiple offers or you have multiple ideas. And you're, you may be wondering which one to go with. We have the Seven of Swords. Hmm. Okay, so we have the Two of Swords, we have the Seven of Swords, and we have the Ten of Wands. Okay, so this, this Pluto and Eighth House energy is becoming a little bit more intense than I thought. <laughs> We're going through some deep healing here, it looks like. Um, this is really all about discovering yourself and discovering yourself and finding confidence in yourself. When I look at this, oh, I'm going to pull cards from another deck, but I actually just want to talk about this first. Um, when I look at this seven of swords, you see how there's this being and there's, yeah, seven mirrors and seven different reflections of them. Um, just keeping in mind the theme of this reading of you know your future self encouraging you to be yourself and you guys stepping into an energy that is more authentic and people being really drawn to that um i think you guys until now like you match people's energy really really well um you could also have gemini placements i feel like i've said a lot of signs so far but <laughs> just naming them as they come to me um but I feel like it's it's almost like you're kind of a different person depending on who you're dealing with. And that's not a judgment because I think we all do that to some degree. You know, we we mirror we mirror other people that we're with, we match each other's energy. That's a very normal thing. But I think that in your case, it might come from this feeling of like I have to match this person's energy so that they like me. I have to match this person's energy so that they approve of me. And when you're moving into this space, because I do think you guys are moving into a space of a lot of people who can be mentors to you. There might be a lot of people around you who are like more successful, more knowledgeable, more confident, just because they have more experience than you. And if you're going into environments like that with this mindset, I can see that becoming like, really really stressful really really fast um because you're like i don't know how to match this energy i don't know how to be what you are and it, it has to be okay to be who you are and to be where you're at and to be okay with what you have and and how you're presenting and this could also be like comparison it, you look at someone oh they're doing amazing i should be more like that oh they look amazing i should be more like that and yeah, this is all about coming back to who you authentically are. But if you've been doing, if you've been living like this for a very long time, it, it can be, 
it can be kind of difficult to to know who you truly are you know the aries energy is all about your identity it's it's related to the first house and so this this is like going deep into your shadows and and figuring out who you truly are so i think what we're seeing here with the seven of swords as like one of your potential courses of action is some some really really deep soul searching which i actually think will help you a lot if you guys are a creative person this process might be kind of yeah that's why you have to lighten your load because it might take a lot out of you but you're gonna come out with an amazing sense of self and amazing ideas to share and amazing art to share with the world for some of you if you are artists um some the word fragmentation is coming to my mind as well and i'm not super knowledgeable about this but the idea is like when we experience trauma we our psyche or our consciousness like splits at that point so there's a part of us that is like stuck in that moment and then there's another part of us that evolves to like protect us from that memory um if i got that wrong feel free to correct me in the comments but it's this idea of like any time we experience trauma our consciousness splits again and again and again and we have all these different versions of ourselves that will come out at different times to manage our interactions and to protect us so that we don't get hurt so you guys might uh resonate with that like feeling like you have a lot of different selves and not knowing which one is is the real self um yeah but this is giving me like really taking a long hard look in the mirror and and asking yourself who you really are and if, if there's no right answer right but it's just about feeling comfortable with who you are and feeling confident with who you are so if you come out of this and say like I I don't think I'm any of these reflections or I think I am all of these reflections or I think I'm reflections one, three, and six. Like any of those is is accurate, but we want to we want to stop being the versions of ourselves that don't serve us and that feel inauthentic and that feel out of alignment. So yeah, taking stock of who you are and, and why you might assume certain personalities and why you might act the way that you do in certain situations this is one of your this is one of your courses of action and actually there was a message about you guys i think you might be receiving multiple offers multiple opportunities or you have um multiple ideas that you want to execute and you're not sure which way to take it like which career path should i pursue which job offer should i take where should i live um, what kind of creations should I put out? And maybe you've been in this kind of indecisive energy. And I think that if you do this, I, I think I'd call it shadow work. If you do this seven of swords shadow work, that might actually help you to make your decision because one of your options that you're looking at, one of your candidates might be out of alignment with you, but you don't even realize it because you've been assuming this persona of someone who is in alignment with it once you go through the shadow work you're like what the what was i thinking i don't want to do that i don't want to pursue that career so we have to look at all of these and pick out the imposters you know i'm thinking of like when you look at suspects through the glass and they're all standing against the wall you have to be like you get out <laughs> you're you're not the real me go away <laughs> um yeah so i think these kind of these kind of go together um but I guess this would be your energy of indecision. This would be shadow work that ultimately removes the indecision. And then with the 10 of wands here, I think this is talking about you guys. Um, this is talking about you guys asking for help. This is actually really similar to the lighten your load card in that you're carrying a burden that is too heavy with this Saturn card here. Oh, maybe this, is this card associated with Saturn? Then it would be Saturn in Sagittarius, I think. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to learn all the Zodiac associations of the Minor Arcana, but I, I suck at it. So <laughs> um, just ignore me. But um, you guys might have grown up in an environment or just been in an environment for a long time where you are kind of harshly 
judged or you were forced into certain boxes um, or you had to do everything by yourself. Maybe you had to become very responsible at a very young age or um, take care of yourself or take care of others all by yourself at a very young age. But one thing I think you guys need to heal is... Mm, is this feeling like I have to do everything by myself or I'm responsible for everything or I have to take care of everything. Even when you're interacting with people, it's like, I'm responsible for this interaction to go well. I'm responsible for this person to like me. So I have to pull out all the stops to impress them and to make them comfortable and for them to feel in their element. No, the era that's coming for you guys now is that you're like unapologetically yourself. And if people don't vibe with your energy or if people can't handle your radiance or if they're not on the same wavelength they're out like you're done changing to appease people you're done fitting into boxes you're done wearing a mask and hiding your true self like that's over it's not your responsibility you've re you've assumed so many responsibilities that are not yours it's like I don't know, the part of your brain that's like, this is my job, this is my problem, I need to take care of this, I think might be kind of on overdrive. So like every little thing, you're like, I'm on it, I gotta do this. And the worst thing is that some of you guys might have been praised for this, which is messed up. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you're so on top of things. You're so hardworking, you're so considerate. When you're actually doing something based out of fear and doing something that has been harmful to your mental health. Whew, so I think mm, this took a, a heavy turn, but I honestly, I shouldn't be surprised because we had Pluto in eighth house energy. Um, and clearly you've made it through this tough energy because your future self is coming back and singing your praises and, and thanking you, thanking you for getting through all of this. I think the 10 of wands is about you asking for help and I actually think that with the with the beautiful people and beautiful connections that are coming in you can find yourself in the process but I think you have to turn off that mechanism and it will be difficult but your future self is asking you to turn off that mechanism when you're interacting with someone or when you're in a room full of people of like what can I do to impress this person what can I do to make this person like me what can I do to not annoy this person or not make them have to make any effort or not make them have to think or not challenge them at all how can i be palatable and agreeable Ooh, you guys yeah you might have had like past partners or family members who it was all about like appearances and looking nice and not causing any trouble man i'm thinking of uh in harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban where i think her name is aunt marge comes over and they're like trying to entertain her and act like a perfect family and Harry has to stay in his room and pretend like he doesn't exist because that would affect the image of the family like you have this in you like I need to be entertaining I need to be making everyone comfortable no you don't <laughs> it's not your problem you just you just have to be you and I think your future self wants you to be a little bit unique and push the envelope and challenge people and make people uncomfortable so yes, all that to say, your future self is asking you to turn that off or to find out how to turn that off. And if at the end of all that, you still don't know who you are, that's okay because you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out as you go along, as you follow your joy, which I think you'll have a better idea of and do what comes naturally to you. I feel like on the other side of the wall is yourself waiting to meet you. Ooh, I, yay. Okay, so I think I'm going to do the format of your reading a little bit differently. I already have done it differently because for the other groups, I like went into this deck right away. But I want to see if we can get any advice for this indecision of like, which idea should you go for? Which opportunity should you take? And I actually feel like taking two cards for it. Some advice for group four. We have three of pentacles. Yeah, so you're going to be collaborating with a group for sure. Um, 
Three of Pentacles is uh, Mars in Capricorn energy, and Mars is actually exalted in Capricorn. Um, so this means you're going to be in a group that has amazing work ethic, um, really strong vision, amazing cooperators that make you feel confident, very professional as well. Oh, and I can't believe I didn't uh, think of this. Um, it was in group three, I think, that I mentioned the huge full moon on this card and how this person has their back turned to it and is covering their eyes and is not looking at it. The full moon is your emotions that want to be seen. And I think it's talking about your shadow. It's talking about unhealed wounds that want to be seen. And they're creeping up on you like, hello. And you're like, nope, I don't see it. I'm not looking at it. And the two of swords, in, in the context of this deck, it's like indecision that stems from an inability or a refusal to acknowledge how you truly feel. All right, let's get one more. We have the three of pentacles and we have the eight of cups. This imagery here is making me think of the phrase like, take the plunge. So I think for a lot of you guys, the opportunity that you should go for or the project that you should start on, it would involve you walking away from something. It would involve you leaving something behind, like walking away from your current situation. Um, and then take the plunge makes me think of, you know, taking a risk and going all in. And I think that whoever is bringing you this offer is also taking the plunge in some ways, like they're walking away from something to start on this project or it's just kind of a risky, it has like an element of risk. It's like a very unique vision, maybe hasn't been done before. Maybe there's not really like a tried and true method and you're just relying on your work ethic. You're just relying on like your grit and your previous experience to make it work. Um, but the key is that the person bringing you this offer or the people bringing you this offer are going to feel really, really confident about it. And you're going to get this feeling of like, wow, these people really know what they're doing. These people are really serious about this so that it almost wouldn't even feel scary to take this plunge. I think that it might even be several people. So like a team, because the three of pentacles is, is three people working together and you're like taking the plunge together. You're committing to cooperating and you're going to be really, really successful. Um, but yeah, I, it might even be a process of elimination for some of you guys, like um, doing shadow work and realizing, <laughs> why was I even considering that option? That is so not me. Um, but I think, yeah, who is coming to make you an offer? It will feel kind of risky, but it will feel right. So let's take... Yeah, I'm just totally <laughs> going freely with the format. And it makes sense because this is my innovative group. <laughs> this is my think outside the box group. Um, let's see what's coming in this future when you, when you choose to be yourself and when you choose to ask for help. So some of you guys are, you're like mourning the loss of the inauthentic you, even though it wasn't really you and even though it wasn't really in alignment with you, it's still sad because you've developed an attachment to it. Like you've developed an attachment to your old identity or to your own, your old connections or to your old environment and they bring some level of comfort to you, right? So you might go through kind of a grieving period of your old self or grieving for your past self And then, and then we have the Seven of Cups, and I'm going to take one more. Ooh, and then we have the Emperor. Yay, okay. Look at this imagery. Look at this Seven of Cups imagery. The Seven of Cups is traditionally about having a lot of options and being overwhelmed, but you see how there's one cup that is like 
on top of the person's head. This cup is the one. This one is the cup to choose. And the Seven of Cups has come to have an association with the crown chakra for me. So like psychic insights, downloads, um, intuitive hits. So you're going to go through this grieving process. You guys are definitely going through like a big energetic purge and a big emotional release after this. So just be aware of that if that hasn't happened yet. But then it's going to come to you like, bing, like a light bulb going off. Like that's it. So you're going to have like, you might actually, you might have like a prophetic dream about what it is that you're meant to do, but you will get some psychic insights about it. You will get you'll get signs and synchronicities about it as well. Almost like your your higher self and your spiritual team confirming to you like, congratulations, you made it out. <laughs> you made it out of the trenches and you found your cup. So yeah, pay attention to dreams, pay attention to downloads, to signs and synchronicities because um, it, it's just going to feel right. Um, when you're like, for example, when you're in a meeting or when you're in an interview, they might, the interviewer might say a word or a phrase that is like really, really, um, really, really specific for you. They don't realize, but it has a very, very significant meaning for you. And that just makes a light bulb go off in your head. Like you're definitely going to have help recognizing this opportunity. That's amazing. And then we have the emperor, which it goes so well with the energy we saw at the beginning, which was Oh, you know, it's so cool. So like this is a one card and this is a five card. And then of course, Emperor is four, but it's written in Roman numerals. So it says like one, five. So new beginnings and change. Um, but yeah, the Emperor is all about confidence and independence and, and building your empire and feeling very secure in yourself and feeling really fulfilled that you have something to fight for and that you have something to work towards. It's just, whew, it's like such a victorious and triumphant energy. What a roller coaster. <laughs> what a roller coaster this reading was. Like your future self came through like, yeah, everything's gonna be amazing and you're gonna be so happy. But by the way, you're going through a shit ton of shadow work first, but then we're gonna be so amazing and everything's gonna be great. Um, but man, I can see why your future self is so grateful for the work that you've put in here. Like this is not, this is not an easy feat. You guys are transmuting so much energy. You guys are healing so much energy. You might be healing things for like previous generations as well. It's, oof, it's tough, man, but <laughs> it's so worth it. So let's take a look now at these further Oracle cards for advice from your future self. Mm, not surprised. <laughs> we have Kyanite, make time for self-care. Taking care of yourself is essential right now. Lighten your load. And I'm going to repeat, don't feel bad about canceling or saying no to any kind of social commitments for the next while. We also have Peridot, which I think is the birthstone of Leo or of the month of August with ooh, life lessons. And I said the letter L might be significant and we have two L's here. Um, you can break free from recurring negative patterns by praying to know the lesson and the blessing they contain. Mm -hmm. So we're breaking negative cycles. We're breaking the pattern. And then we have play. Yeah. After all of this heavy energy is going to be time for you guys to have fun. And actually maybe some of you guys are like already on the tail end of this or already like about to finish off this cycle. Um, I should say, if you're going through this right now, it's not going to happen again. So don't worry. Well, it might because that's life, but <laughs> not anytime soon. So play says, beloved one, it's time to set aside work for a while. Interesting. Lots of cards about um, taking it easy on the work, light your load, take care of yourself. Don't worry, we will oversee your responsibilities to their completion. Um, also, you guys might be working with or working alongside um, people who are like super understanding. If you need to take a sick day, if you need extra time to finish something, you know, they're very compassionate. They want you to prioritize your self-care because they understand that someone who is, you know, well-rested and 
and mentally healthy and at peace can do a lot more efficient and good quality work. Um, don't worry, we will oversee your responsibilities to their completion. Playfulness, gaiety, and laughter will lift your energy so that you'll return to work with a renewed perspective and heightened energy. Some of you guys might even need to take like some time off or take some sick days when you're going through this intense spiritual transformation, which I think honestly normalize <laughs> normalize downtime for spiritual upgrades for real. Um, okay. So the last deck that we want to use, we're going to see if there's any significant time frames for you guys. I've named like every zodiac sign, I think. So um, I feel like those are not very accurate for time frames, but we'll see what we can get here. Group number four, what time frames might be significant for them. We have sex style, so this would be um, like within the next two months or two months from now. And then, ooh, we have Gemini, so Gemini season. And actually, if you guys are watching this right when it's uploaded, two months from now is going to be Gemini season because I think that this is going to be up in, um, ah, <laughs> I was just gonna say, I think this is gonna be up in Aries season. And then we have Aries at the bottom of the deck. So like between Aries and Gemini season, and yeah, Aries and Gemini are sextile. That's why it's two months. Um, this is of course a timeless reading and you could have stumbled upon this video at any time. So if you have stumbled upon this reading later on, just think of it as like within the next two months. But group four, these are all the messages I have for you guys. So I'm gonna end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you're interested in listening to that or any of my other songs, the music channel will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love, both your current self and your future self, and your future self is sending you so, so much love and strength and encouragement, and I'm sure they will tell you, if you ever need my help, just call on me. I'm here. I'll, I'll give you the advice that you need. I'll give you the help that you need. I will come to you in your dream and school you. <laughs> I'll be your mentor. So yeah, I'm sending you guys lots of love, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.